Thing I call this Coventry Town Council meeting to order. All new council members are present. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is our audience of citizens portion. If you'd like to speak, go ahead to the podium. Give us your name and address, please. Kathleen Bragmusher, 61 Barber Drive. I'm here tonight to get a few things off my chest. I was at the Board of Education meeting on Thursday night and was disgusted with the behavior that I witnessed in the audience by two of our town council members. To be fair, there were others in the audience, too, that were out of line. To be calling out names at someone while they are speaking is rude, disrespectful, and is to count town council members, one of which, Mr. O'Brien Sr., that has been around for quite some time. Quite frankly, you should simply know better. I did get up and speak on Thursday during the audience of citizens because I was not happy with the behavior that I witnessed. There were children in the room, and they had to witness terrible words coming out of your mouths and others. Grown adults threw a temper tantrum, yelling at Bill Oros in the middle of his speech, personally attacking him and calling him different names. I, for one, think you owe those kids an apology for your behavior. To make matters worse, the nasty rhetoric that I witnessed later on that evening and the next day on Facebook by Coventry's Republican Town Committee, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure, pretty sure hiding behind that name is Matt O'Brien Jr. What was happening and being said on Facebook was even worse than what I witnessed in person. And comments from people who also felt the same as me were very quickly being deleted by the admin of the page for the Republican Town Committee. So that gets more to why I'm here tonight. I'm here because I'm going to stand here in front of you, not hiding behind a keyboard, face to face, so that you have to listen to me. And you cannot delete what I'm saying. Bill Oros is a man of integrity with years of working in education. He's been in education longer than some people in this room that have been on this earth. One of the comments you deleted almost immediately after being posted said in part, Bill absolutely voted in the best interest of the board as a whole and the children as he put experience before party. I've seen on Facebook comments from people saying after what they witnessed, they were going to leave the Republican Party, and I too thought of that, as I am a Republican. However, I'm not going to let a couple very loud, obnoxious voices that only speak for a few drive me away. I'm going to continue to stay in my party and vote my conscience, regardless of that opinion should come down, to, down on either side of the left or the right. And when I hear vicious comments coming out of people's mouths that are only trying to divide our town instead of unite, I'm going to call you out on it. We are a town of approximately 12,000 people. We are considered a small town. <clears throat> Generally, I am proud to say that I live in Coventry. But what I witnessed over the past several months with this election cycle was nothing but sad. The things being said about our neighbors, your neighbors, has gotten so personal. What is the definition of civility? It's a formal politeness or courtesy in behavior or speech. I implore you to please bring back civility to this town of ours. It's going to start with the leaders of our political parties. It is not so much that you disagree with Bill, but the way you express yourselves online and in person that is so horrifying. We are all entitled to our opinions, but should be expressing them with civility. What, it do what does it accomplish posting Bill's email address on someone else's Facebook page that is not even associated with Coventry? All I can think of is that Matt O'Brien Jr. is trying to further his extreme ideological phil philosophy and political aspirations beyond Coventry to a larger audience. You both owe Bill Oros an apology for the way you treated him. This is not about you disagreeing with him. It is about the way you interrupted him while speaking and later hid behind a keyboard using words such as traitor and betrayal, all while giving out his email address to people outside our town. I am hoping you saw the error in your ways, and that is why you deleted that post. But, that did, but what did that accomplish to further move this town forward in a positive direction? 
I'm glad my kids were not there to witness that behavior the other night. I can tell you that if they were ever involved in a similar situation where they interrupted someone while speaking in a public forum, I would be marching them back there to apologize and there would be severe consequences at home. But even my 11-year-old knows better than the two of you to behave like that. Adults are looked upon to be role models in children's lives, especially adults in position of leadership. I can assure you, if both of my children are ever exposed to you, they will have real life examples of how not to behave. Hi, Peter DiPiola, 82 Wall Street. Um, well, I'm happy to report on the Veterans Day race, which is also known as the Veterans Day Patriot race, so some people may have been confused, but it's the same thing. This, is, this was our fourth running of the event, and I just wanted to come here today to, first of all, thank and compliment um, everybody in the town. Um, they did an exceptional job in the park, um, really an outstanding job. This year we had over 235 runners. We had an uh, overflow crowd in the uh, kids' run. Um, I don't know, John. I think you said the parking lot was pretty full. We couldn't even save a spot for you. Sorry about that. Um, so it was a good problem to have. We had several hundred people in the park. Um, we had over uh, 200 volunteers um, to complement all the runners. Um, the, the American Legion had a uh, canteen, which basically uh, they, they made uh, chili and hot dog uh, in, the, uh, in the lodge. Everything went very, very well. Um, we're thankful that the weather was very cooperative, which helped last year. If you recall, we had rain, snow, sleet, and then a little sunshine at the end. This year it was a frosty 16 degrees first thing in the morning, but it warmed up very nice to be a perfect day for running. Um, so we had a great turnout, um, great cooperation with uh, the, uh, the police, fire department, uh, park and rec, um, as, as well as... Um, uh, DPW. So I want to thank you, John, for all the help that everyone in the town gave and everyone that was there. Um, we only heard nothing but, uh, but great compliments. So I wanted to pass that, uh, pass that along because sometimes I think we get caught up in all the other things that we want done or don't get done the way we want. But I'm happy to tell you that um, the Veterans Day race, it was year four. Um, we'll see how we do next year. Fingers are crossed. So if we um, get the permits and it's approved, we'll probably at least go for one more year and see where we go. Um, one last thing is I think I have in the past given you a couple of our medals. I order, I order one extra, and I owe you one from last year, John. So I have for you, I have to talk to the microphone, I understand, last year's medal and this year. For those of you guys who haven't seen it, and if you, and, oh, and by the way, if you can't run four miles, most of you guys in the back row there, I know who you are. I'm going to get your name, rank, and serial number. Um, if you can't run four miles, we also do um, a three-mile walk. <laughs> and, we, and for those of you who like to be in the military guard, we also this year did a three-mile ruck. So if you don't know what a ruck is, it's a military backpack. And this year we asked you to fill it with non-perishable food goods and all that went to shelters that need food goods for the winter. Um, we also had the Waterbury Young Marines there, and they collected um, um, T-shirts, socks, and warm undergarments for people who need them. And last year they filled four bags. This year they filled five bags worth of goods that needed to go to people who are in need. So, again, um, as a runner, long-time runner, you don't get to run through too many courses where you get to go through horse farms, nice countryside um, and for those of you who run the Manchester Road Race, it's a great tune-up because we got Bunker Hill, not as big and nasty as the one in Manchester, but it does get your attention. So again, I wanted to thank the town and thank everybody for your support. Um, I know I've been bugging you probably since the late spring, but everything went very, very well. Um, also, we raised this year almost $10,000. Um, all of that money has been given to veteran organizations. Um, Tomorrow we're doing one more check presentation. We have one left to go, but we've made um, checks. We will have given away all that money that we raised as a result of this event. So thank you to the town. Thank you for everybody who supported it. Um, Coventry looked really good. So thank you for all that. Thank you. Thank you.
Oh, that's okay. I can. So you gotta flip the thing off. It's coming. Really <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's your thank part. you. <coughs> thank you. Thanks, Peter. Mm -hmm. Sandy Simon, 425 Geraldine Drive. I would like to start by congratulating each of you for earning a spot on the Coventry Town Council. As a retired school administrator, I believe data is important. The election data and watching the, the recount of the ballots told me that Republicans voted for Democrats, Democrats voted for Republicans, and unaffiliated voted for both parties. Over 28 people wrote in votes for Mickey Mouse, Queen Elizabeth, and our very own Greg Kiss. Over 60% of our community feels that it does not matter who is elected, as they chose not to vote. When you were elected to this office, you took an oath to serve our community, not one party or the other. I urge you to serve with honor and integrity. Convince the 60% who feel that nothing changes, that they are wrong. Be the council who rises above the negative comments on Facebook and sets the example for our children of how to agree to disagree respectfully. In honor of your moving from the, Republic, from the Republican and Democratic candidates for office to seated members of our town council, I would like to make each of you, this is a sample, a Coventry town council shirt. Mm -hmm. I have two samples here of a design for you to choose from, and I do it because it's cold, long sleeve winter polos. The council can choose the design of your choice and the color you'd like. I just need how you want your names to appear on the shirt and the size that you'd like. Please let this be a reminder that we are all members of this wonderful community. While we may see different paths to desired outcomes, we are more than a political party. We are family, friends, and neighbors. In the event that John tells me I can't just donate the shirts to you, I would like you as a council to donate money to either the town, the town food bank or PJ Day to benefit CCMC as payment for the shirts. Thank you. Carolyn Arabolis, 132 North Farms Road. First, I want to congratulate all of you on your election and re-election to town council, and thank you for your service to our town. While council meetings are not the place for town politics, they are the appropriate venue to hold our elected leaders accountable. Disrupting a board of education meeting with name calling and under the breath mutterings is not professional, nor is this a type of behavior we expect from our town officials. Bringing your concerns in a constructive manner to the audience of citizens, as Mr. Williams did this past Thursday, is the appropriate way to express your frustration and disagreement with the actions of a government body and its members. <clears throat> Additionally, using social media to encourage others to harass a board member is most certainly not acceptable conduct of elected officials. This shameful behavior shows a clear lack of leadership, continues to amp up the venomous rhetoric we all want to put behind us, and is not something we as citizens should tolerate. Regardless of political affiliation or who voted for who, we all look to each of you to lead and govern with integrity, honesty, and with the best interests of Coventry in mind. I ask that you always be mindful of this great obligation bestowed on you by your friends and neighbors in holding yourselves to a high standard of leadership and in continuing to move our town forward. My name is Emma Eaton. I live at 41 Sean Circle. At Thursday night's Board of Education meeting, the town's new and returning representatives of our school system were sworn in before a room overflowing with citizens. What should have been a celebratory evening for everyone involved became a deeply embarrassing and dehumanizing spectacle, in part due to the behavior of members of this town council. 
At that meeting, Mr. Oros chose to nominate and support Jennifer Beausoleil to continue as chair of the Board of Education. He gave a statement explaining why he was making that choice, prefacing his statement with the acknowledgement that his decision would be controversial. Undoubtedly, everyone is entitled to their own personal opinions regarding Mr. Oros's decisions, be they in support or against. Each member of council and every citizen of this town has the right to their own feelings about what happened. That said, there are appropriate and respectful ways in which to express those opinions. As council, our elected representatives, you are and should be held to a higher standard of behavior. You represent an example to the Coventry community on how to express differing opinions in such a way that we can continue to work together and at the end of the day, walk out of that room and still be neighbors. Expressing your opinions with civility and basic decency should be your standard. Instead, members of this council were heard by each person in that room, muttering during the proceedings, and in some cases, outright shouting insults at Mr. Oros. Making this display particular di particularly disappointing, students and their parents were also present, and therefore were forced to bear witness to this behavior. Present in the room were four students there to receive CAPS Superintendent Student Awards, a high honor for them and their families. Also present were students meant to observe the meeting for their civic involvement class. <laughs> Those students were laughing at you. They were laughing at the behavior displayed because it was so outrageous. The people seated before me tonight should be setting an example for the students in this town of what it means to be an elected representative in Coventry, to care for their community, and to strive to do good what they saw was adults behaving like children. And so respectfully, I stand before you tonight as a member of Coventry's community, as a parent, and as a person who expects all of you to do and be better, and I demand that a public apology be made by the council members who participated in this behavior, not only to Mr. Oros for the way that he was treated, but to Naomi Lynn Sanders, Owen Dieterle, Ava Coonley, Dylan Patrick, their families, and all of the high school CI students who had to witness what happened in that room. The election is over. It's time for both the Board of Education and the Town Council to work together as a single team to make our community better and stronger. And I do request that this statement be read into the minutes, please. shorter than everyone else. Um, I'm Robin Gallagher, 984 Main Street. I have to say that I believe I've interacted with each of you in one capacity or another, and it's been my pleasure to do so. And based on that, I think we're close enough that I can tell you a shameful secret. I'm a lawyer. It's true. I litigate and I argue with people for a living, which shouldn't be a surprise to any of you who have interacted with me on Facebook. Um, Despite that, despite that, I have to say that with years of litigating and going into courtrooms with people against whom I am actually opposed, I have never seen the type of behavior that was exemplified on Thursday in the Board of Ed meeting. In these litigation contexts, there is a winner or a loser. It is often a zero-sum game. My motion is either granted or denied. And there are times when I'm incredibly frustrated with opposing counsel. Maybe I feel he's misled the court. Maybe I feel he's been dishonest. Uh, maybe I feel he's been disrespectful to me. Despite that, the expectation for my behavior is that it's always civil because we are a small legal community and we may run into each other at the bar event. Um, town government is different. This is not a zero-sum game. There are no winners or losers here. You are each elected to work together so that everyone wins. And when you leave this room, your neighbors who may run into each other at the actual bar. <laughs> so all I'm asking is that you raise the level of your behavior above the bar set by lawyers. All you have to do is behave better than lawyers. And given 
the legal community's reputation, that shouldn't be too hard. So respectfully, I stand before you tonight as a member of Coventry's community, as a parent, as a person who expects all of you to do and be better, and I request a public apology be made by the council members who participated in the behavior at question, not only to Mr. Oros for the way he was treated, but also to the four students there to receive an award, their families, and all of the high school CI students who had to witness what happened in that room. The election is over. It's no longer a zero-sum game. We're all expected to work together. So it's time for both the Board of Education and the Town Council to come together as a single team to make our community better and stronger. Uh, I also request that this statement be read into the minutes. Thank you. My name is Angela Raymond, and I live at 122 Judd Road. Uh, Mr. Ryan, I would appreciate it if you gave me your full attention, as you have actually not given everyone your full attention. Thank you. Senior, junior, thank you. Respectfully, I stand before you tonight as a member of Coventry's community, as a parent, as a person who expects all of you to do and be better. And I demand a public apology be made by the council members who participated in this behavior, not only to Mr. Oros for the way he was treated, but to Naomi Lynn Sanders, Owen Dearly, Ava Coonley, and Dylan Patrick, their families, and all of the high school CI students who had to witness what happened in that room. The election is over, and it is time for both the Board of Education and the Town Council to work together as a single team to make our community better and stronger. And I also request that this statement be read into the minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Bob Chipkin. I'm at the 454 Cassidy Hill Road. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, first, I want to congratulate the, uh, all the new members of the council. Um, I'm confident that all of you will continue to act uh, in the future in the, in the best interests of Coventry and in their citizens. Uh, there is some unfinished business from last year. Uh, I have several items that I'd like to talk through. First is the, uh, the issue that was probably deferred last year, and that's putting the town on record regarding tolls. Uh, tolls fortunately have not been brought up uh, by the uh, majority party at the state level, um, but there's always the concern that it, it may be brought back. And I think it's perfectly legitimate for this town to express its opinion. Uh, I'm not demanding that you do it. I'm humbly suggesting that you do it uh, to uh, offer uh, to the state government the idea that Coventry is not behind uh, the tolls. Second item I'd like to discuss is the library. I have the minutes. Uh, they were available for the last two meetings. Uh, the first, um, the October 28th meeting, uh, had a discussion of the library. Uh, it, it stated that uh, the courtyard was going to be expanded to the extent of 432 feet. Um, based on discussions with uh, various members of the council, I, I know that that number is low. However, it's not in the subsequent minutes. And as far as I know, the town still is, uh, has out there that that low level of uh, uh, construction is going to occur. Uh, I think it's much higher. Uh, and in, in addition, uh, it, look, it appears from the uh, October 28th minutes that we're talking about a very, very substantial project, millions of dollars. I stood before this, uh, this group two years ago when the, uh, the number was five and a half million dollars and I said, that's not going to fly. It didn't fly with the town. Uh, I still think that a, an expansion, frankly, of uh, the library in the millions of dollars is not going to fly uh, when it comes up for the next vote. Uh, I would suggest that you might talk to the existing committee 
um, and tell them to back down uh, to a more reasonable level of expenditure uh, and of, ne of necessary uh, uh, construction uh, of the library. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kelly Sobel, 343 Riley Mountain Road. As you know, I also was in attendance on a Thursday night at the Board of Education meeting, and I also had the displeasure of witnessing the events that took place um, after Mr. Bill Oros um, made his, his, might I add, decision um, to do what he chose was best with his vote on Thursday night. With that said, Respectfully, I stand before you tonight as a member of Coventry's community, as a parent, as a person who expects all of you to do and be better, and I demand a public apology be made by the council members who participated in the behavior not only to Mr. Oros, for the way that he was treated, but also to Naomi Lynn Sanders, Owen Dieterle, Ava Kunley, Dylan Patrick, and their families, and to all of the high school CI students who had to witness what happened in that room. Mind you, the four students that were mentioned sat there and waited and witnessed while they were supposed to be receiving their superintendent's awards. The election is over, and it's time for both the Board of Education and the Town Council to work together as a single team to make our community better and stronger. I also request that this statement be read into the minutes. Thank you. Jessica Hall, 745 Merrill Road. You've heard it many times, and you're going to have to listen to it again. I'm a first grade teacher. I know that for some people, they need to hear things repeatedly to really understand the message being sent. Respectfully, I stand before you tonight as a member of Coventry's community, as a parent, as a person who expects all of you to do and be better. I demand a public apology be made by the council members who participated in this behavior, not only to Mr. Oros for the way he was treated, but to Naomi Lynn Sanders, Owen Dieterle, Ava Coonley, Dylan Patrick, their families, and all of the high school CI students who had to witness what happened in that room. The election is over, and it is time for both the Board of Education and Town Council to work together as a single team to make our community better and stronger. I also request that this statement be read into the minutes. Seeing none, I close that portion of our meeting. Can I have a motion to accept our minutes? Of Move to approve the minutes of November 4. Second. Thank you, Richard. Any changes, corrections, or additions for those of us that were present? <laughs> yeah. That's a couple. Uh, page 3, under F1, top line, just second sentence just changed the uh, today I believe yeah I concur. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry page three. three page three under f1 first oh, line f1 okay f1 first line <coughs> second sentence I was looking first at word. b1 <laughs> okay Page six, B nineteen twenty twenty two. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, the eighth line down. Um, right before, you, if you look for Amanda's name, it's the word right before it. Um, it says between senior staff and junior staff. It should, I believe it should say time because what we were trying to do is determine 
uh, the mix of their um, allocated time. And I had a question, and, and this may be correct in the minutes, but it may not be. On page seven, it talks about the uh, the new crop, the crosswalk uh, that we're putting in. And John, is it, so I'd asked about um, additional signing, and you said there will be one. Is it one in each direction? I just it wasn't clear. Uh, I think the the point was will it be on the front and back of each post, on each side. Okay, I was asking if there's going to be a. I thought I was asking if there was going to be a sign, like you know, in advance. In advance, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's so there'd be one on each. There's uh, yes, there's several right now coming this way. Yep. Okay. Um, and there's only one coming that way, so we're trying to get one. One additional. One so it is only one additional, not one in each direction. Right. Okay. That's all I was asking. I think that's all I have. I have minutes to say one additional. Is no, the John. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would make it clear. Yep. John? Uh, yes, I have at the bottom of page three under F1, the last bullet. Um, right now it makes reference at the end of the first line to the methane fields at Miller Richardson. <laughs> I'd like to uh, <laughs> change that to the methane venting at Miller Richardson and then I'd like to add football field for clarity because there are the baseball fields and the football fields. So. Uh, is that clear for uh, Further, uh, I have some others, I'm sorry. On page four, uh, just about halfway down the page, it's in the, the first bullet there where that actually shows a bullet. One, two, three, fourth up from the bottom of that bullet, it says the military is supposing <coughs> to, I think that's supposed to be doing something. And then at the bottom of that page, second to last bullet, second line up, <coughs> it says the ability to fish. I think it was specifically their ability to fish, referring to the raptors just prior to that. God bless you. Second bullet from the bottom. Okay. So second bullet from the bottom, second line from the bottom of that, or no, it's the very last the line. Very last line. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Is that clear? Yes, I'm not sure if it's correct though. Mm -hmm. John, do you have a sense? I, it was that's discussed <laughs> as you were. That's what I heard. I wasn't present at the meeting, but John yes. eloquently stated it. I think I've heard it in more than one meeting. Was it the ability of the birds to fish or yeah, the ability raptors. of people to fish? So then no, the, the birds. Yeah. yeah. Concerns okay. about the raptors and their ability to okay. fish. Um, moving to the next page, page five. Uh, I just had a question, clarification under two microgrid cogen update. One, two, three, four line from the bottom says installation of tiles for peak demand. Is that a correct term? I don't know. Yeah, it's a tile, a thick of tiles is an electronic control. Okay, just throw that out there because I didn't, didn't quite remember that and I'm usually pretty good with that's the terminology. What call, that's what they call them. But okay. Normal person don't know what it is. Understood. I'll count myself in the normal people. Thanks. <laughs> uh, under item four, capital budget, the end of the last full line there, it says the operation budget manual coming. I think we should insert the word is. It's coming out on Friday. Do you see where I am? Mm -hmm. You're good? Okay, I'm sorry. I don't want to keep blowing past. It. And I believe that's all I have. Lisa, did you have something? Uh, no, he covered it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> and I have just one on page two. The seventh paragraph down that starts with Matthew O'Brien. The end of the sentence, the food from Highland Park, probably just should say the food was from Highland Park at the end of that first line. Yes. Otherwise, everything that talked. You can see the way. Uh, I think he had said that both were terrific. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why <laughs> the sentence reads the way it reads. You may not speak correctly, we're terrific. The food from Highland Park and, and the, the speakers were terrific. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. Nothing else? 
All those in favor of approving the minutes as corrected, please say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Richard, Richard. Richard, Richard. Yeah. All right. Next on our agenda is a consent agenda. For anyone new to the council, these are items marked with an asterisk. If we vote to approve the consent agenda, those things will not be discussed tonight at the table. Do I have a motion to approve our consent agenda? So moved. Thank you, Lisa. Please. And second. the second. I'd like to, if I could. Yeah. I'd like to remove item 6F11, just to basically the, the winter's farmer's market, just to highlight that. Okay. I promise there won't be much discussion, but just to. Anything else anybody wants to remove from our consent agenda? All those in favor of approving the consent agenda with removing 6F11, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, for reports. Under my report, um, I want to talk a little about interaction with town staff. <coughs> um, in the past, we have attempted to be sure that there was a proper path and that we didn't take up too much staff time or that we got the answers correctly. I want to be sure that we all feel free to seek our answers, whether it's from the town manager or Amanda Backhouse or whomever. But John Elsesser is our staff. He's the first person we would typically contact. Um, if you seek out information, I would hope that you would then share your findings so that we can all learn from something you're researching. But I was almost hoping or I want to send it to steering so that we could look at this how best we as council members can use the town staff or what you know do you foresee any problems with one or the other or the Board of Ed uh, Dr. Patron if we have questions on things how do we best get our answers so I think I'd love to send that to steering and then steering can bring it back to the whole council and we can look at it and maybe reconstruct our policy on that or, or create an actual policy for it. Um, one other thing that we always have to be aware of, when we get an email from our town manager, from any of us, you cannot respond to all because that will then constitute a meeting. And that is not okay. We need to warn our meetings. If it's a, if it's a subject that will be discussed at the council table. Right, but you can respond to John Elsesser, you can respond to Laura Stone, but please be aware that you should not reply to all. That does not infringe your right to caucus within your parties. Right. Right, this was... All right, and in our packet we have information that this Thursday, November 21st, at 7 o'clock here at the Town Hall <coughs> Annex will be a meeting to discuss the Swamp Road four-way intersection. We all got something handed out this <coughs> evening, if anybody's interested. Right. I think that is what I wanted to report on this evening. Are there, say that again? Oh, I'm looking and I wrote all over my paper. <laughs> I'm sorry. Tonight, John Elsesser is going to tell us what projects are underway, what the council prior to this one has been working on, and then after that, I would like us to discuss perhaps a, a goal-setting meeting, or if you think we can accomplish it just during an actual council meeting. But I typically, it'd be better to have a, an informal meeting where we could really talk about things and then come back at the council table and present our goals and set them down. Okay. Any council members wish to speak on anything this evening? Lisa? Um, just very briefly, I just wanted to say that um, I went to um, the opening of the Coventry Winter Farmers Market, and it was fantastic. Yeah, they're a little late, but uh, there's still plenty of people there, so it's a great event. Awesome. Yeah, I wasn't able to attend this one. Anybody else have anything they want to share? Council members? No? Okay. I do. I'll, I'll read something real quick. All right. So I wanted to thank the residents of Coventry who came out to speak tonight. I love the passion, the commitments to their opinions, and the fact that Coventry has awoken. 
the, the turnout was exceptional on election day, which showed us that the public is very concerned about the direction Coventry is heading with the instability of our state government. Whichever side of the aisle you may be on, the message voters sent was that they wanted Republican leadership on both the town council and the board of education. I'm proud of my party, my town, and all my associates here at the council. Democracy isn't always convenient or comfortable. We as Americans began our nation as revolutionaries, and that revolutionary spirit still echoes in our blood to this day. Again, thank you Coventry voters for believing in us, believing in me, and in those across the aisle. Let us now get to work on making Coventry the best it can be. Thank you. Thank you. Matt, do you have a finance committee report to share? Um, we did meet tonight uh, at 6.30. Um, we didn't, I don't have anything, if, if, if you were able to just, you know, view the reports that Amanda included in the packet, I think you have all the information that we got. It was more of a uh, get to know the statements and mm -hmm. figure out where we are and be able to move forward kind of a meeting, so. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any questions about our finance reports at this time? Thank you. John. So, uh, you have a written projects update report uh, mm -hmm. from me. Um, kind of uh, highlights that report. Uh, Swamp Road uh, intersection improvement uh, meeting uh, was already discussed. Uh, the community center floor choice project is complete except for the final finished floor. Uh, but there's, the room can be op opened up and walk on the plywood. Um, but we have to get a treatment and we've decided to break from the past of carpeting in that section and go to some type of vinyl surface which is more conducive to paint and other things spilling out. Um, um, the Not that we encourage that. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but it, uh, with the after school program and other events there, it, uh, it, is, it is a reality. Um, we've had uh, a tough fall for getting our projects done uh, between the rain and the cold weather. Um, so. We were able to squeak in uh, some last minute paving, but we're pretty much done because it's just getting too cold for us to continue on. Um, next week, maybe uh, some minor uh, finish work by the town of uh, a couple projects we have opened, uh, but a lot of the work now, uh, we'll have to wait till, uh, till spring. Um, but we were able to get some longstanding and long-standing, meaning decade-long standing uh, projects on uh, Roadsville Road, uh, and also a project up on Depot Drive, which has been an ongoing uh, icing problem uh, resolved, as well as uh, a lot of the other projects that are going on. Um, the flagpole project out front is uh, That's another pretty decades much long project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually have a plan from when Jeff Jacobson was our town engineer. Uh, we waited for a good funding source and finally got some state money to, to fund that. Um, and then we had to scale back when we were doing bids, and I, I like the size it is. I think it's more appropriate than the, the larger one. Uh, so we have another bench coming in in about three weeks or so, um, and uh, Accurate Electric will be finishing up some of the uh, enhanced flagpole light um, because people, it was being lifted in the back and people couldn't see the, the front. Uh, and he <coughs> donated that uh, labor and work, and we ran some conduit that if we want to add a, a sign that's a town hall. Uh, it will be lit also. Uh, so um, that's uh, nearing its uh, conclusion too. Um, and um, in finance, we also discussed the revaluation. Uh, the change notices will be coming out in early uh, December. Uh, the assessor will be before the council in early December to be before the notices go out to kind of explain the overall where we where we stand. Uh, and I just will say this repeatedly as we go through revaluation because it's a time of turmoil. Uh, revaluation does not give the town more money. Uh, it just shovels who, who pays that share of it. As your house value goes up, it goes up or down as a higher percentage compared to the norm. You'll either pay more or less at, if, if the budget remains the same in, in terms of revenues and expenditures. So in and of itself, it doesn't bring any, any more money in. The mill rate may either go up or down depending on how the grant list goes. If, if, if to equal the same 
net revenue received by the town before we talk about the budget. And we'll try to do our best as we go through the budget process to show how that, that, that uh, impact, but it, it, it will impact people differently and we have to keep that in mind. Um, uh, so like, like many times in life, there's gonna be winners and losers, but it's based on the value of the property, uh, not anything you've done. Um, <laughs> so that, um, I'll, I'll kind of stop there. Uh, well, you could talk about Jones Crossing if you want. <laughs> Did they get it done? I have to get yeah, the yes. paving done. Uh, um, so Jones Crossing is pretty much done, uh, uh, which uh, you know, ended up. We we're hoping it'd be done in, in October, and ended up uh, rolling into November a little bit. But uh, um, uh, I think it's a good-looking project, and uh, again, came in. We we're able to bring it in slightly under budget. Uh, and it helped out we got some grant money in too that will uh, offset some of our uh, borrowing expenses. So um, it's much improved and we're hopeful that we won't flood during the winter now. <laughs> yeah. It's nice over every year. Uh, some of the pictures that uh, we had, you could, um, when after heavy rain you could see you could handle that in the old cover, just never could have. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and we never did find a turtle, um, <laughs> which has uh, saved us a thousand dollars a day. Um, A couple of really other quick things just to let you know. Uh, the town staff, I do have a town staff person that asked if we could participate in PJ Day uh, this year, and we will be, so we'll need to register. Uh, but uh, if people come in and see us in appropriate uh, pajama wear, uh, um, we're honoring uh, some good that has come out of our town, uh, <coughs> many good things that have come out of our town, but it's just uh, amazing that. Uh, uh, I think I heard that my <coughs> person uh, can make a difference, and, and that, uh, um, that truly is, uh, is true. Um, and uh, Northfield uh, Catch Basin Project is also starting. So, uh, Newman's construction will be starting up there on uh, some catch basins. We have more bids that will be going out, but uh, uh, that's uh, underway right now. Lisa, uh, is it appropriate for me to ask you questions about things on the project now? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, the, you said there's not going to be any more paving. Mm -hmm. Where does that leave Marrow Road? <laughs> that will get Anybody else driving Marrow Road these days? Yep. I was going to ask if you were. So I saw a little bit of it got done, but you know, some <coughs> of us are finding creative details. Yeah. Uh, some neighbors actually have, have called Puppet Works and thanked us for the speed dump pumps. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, that will be, that will be finished. We're that is the starting. If not, it will be ramps. It will be. Uh, but it, we're on the paving company's list. But uh, there's huge lines at the asphalt plants because of the rainy days, and, and when when it's too cold in the morning, they can't. It's going to be too detailed. But uh, asphalt plants during the normal season can make product and keep it warm in their tower. Mm -hmm. They can't do it when it's that cold at night because it won't be hot. Mm -hmm. So they have to make it as they're going, which means when the trucks show up in the morning, they have to wait. So um, it becomes kind of like uh, uh, the Tom Hanks movie, uh, you came up with a lottery today uh, and you, you know your house is going to get fixed. Depends if your truck's in line on whether you get products. So we, we're on the list, but we can't get guaranteed that we're going to uh, get asphalt. And actually, we're bringing asphalt from um, up in Chickpea, Massachusetts now. And this isn't, I mean, I know the last time I served on council, there were asphalt issues because we passed a road bond yeah. then as well. But when my neighbor stopped me while I'm walking the dog, I can say at least if we can't get it paved, some temporary measures. Yeah, you're not going to have that. A key keyway, and that's cut. Right. And, and that was that work was scheduled. You know, we, we cut that keyway two days above, uh, ahead of when the, the work was supposed to happen, and then we just got rained out, and then we got frozen out. So, um, one way or another, that won't winter because we don't want to hit that with our snow plows here. Um, also, in the project memo is um, item, I think, 16 talks about putting a possible septic system at Laidlaw to allow a toilet trailer. I'm just curious to know where that 
location, what, where what's being considered for where that would go. It's great because then there won't be porta potties to be tipped over. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So um, we'll be. It depends where the good soils are. Uh -huh. uh, so they'll be going up and doing deep holes and, and perk tests. Uh, okay. But in general, the location they're looking at is uh, just slightly into the woods beyond the playscape. Oh, the dogs are going to love that. <laughs> uh, the will probably be, you know, in that corner there or next to the playscape. But the septic system would be probably into the woods a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we have a couple other al alternatives uh, to look at uh, if that, that fails. So it's just we are prioritizing roads over parks right now. That makes sense. Um, and then also uh, the, an ongoing project is the um, disc golf course at Lake Rock, which I was just walking. Um, at Creaser. I mean, I'm sorry, at Creaser. At Creaser. Uh, it was helpful to walk it, and I, it was helpful to see how the pathways have been constructed to be, for the most part, away from where typical pedestrian traffic is happening. Um, and my husband was able to explain to me how it's all going to work. But what was interesting was he was commenting that because of the level of challenge that this discourse, discourse golf discourse, um, is is going to reach, thank you. It's uh, it could attract a lot of people who are looking for this type of um, opportunity. And I just want to make sure that we leverage that. That we leverage that traffic. We should have Wayfair signs at Laidlaw directing. I'm sorry, I go to Laidlaw. Right. We should have Wayfair signs at, at Creaser directing people when they're done into our village. Um, we can have QR codes at the stations directing people into our village. They're going to be hungry. They will have been throwing their discs. I mean, in the, in the summertime, they can go pay the gate fee and swim at Patriots Park. So I'm hoping that that's somewhere on a list. To, you know, We're always talking about how are we going to get people from the things we offer into our, down into our village um, and spending their, their money here. So um, maybe that's something that steering can take up first. And I have one other question. Um, under public safety, you made a comment that efforts in support, and, and again, members from the previous term might know the answer to this, but I don't. Um, efforts in support of school security and the juvenile review board have taken a lot of staff time. And I'm just, um, to me, that sounds like a positive thing. Uh, it sounds like there, there are efforts being made to increase the safety of our kids and help students with their behaviors. Um, is that what's going on? Uh, what, yeah. do you, what do you mean when you say that? No, it is, it's, it's both to, to share where our focuses are, but Officer Spijinski has spent a lot of time reviewing their, their plans, meet, meeting with uh, uh, the school staff administrations and going over their plans, being, giving instructions on... Like their lockdown plans? Uh, you mean their the actual whole, drill plans? The whole school security plans, not okay. just the lockdown. Lockdowns are just one piece of a broader plan. So uh, I think it might be best to have uh, you know, Chief Palmer in to, to talk about that, which he can talk about, some of which he, they can't, because um, some of it is protected. Well, but it's positive, positive things, not enforcement. It's to be of assistance to the Board of Ed in revising and updating their plans. They're going through new security things. And the Juvenile Review Boards, we actually have five cases uh, pending uh, to, as an alternative uh, punishment. And those cases take a lot of time also. So that is not as positive, except it's a positive that they're not going through the other criminal system. Right. Uh, my question was more along the lines of how are we leveraging um, that partnership with our police department and the use of the Juvenile Re Review Board to support families and support positive student behaviors, positive student changes. Is there is there a liaison, like a well, it's liaison. really run by the Human Services Office mm -hmm. and our Youth Services uh, person, so there's a lot of, it is a family family issue. It's not, they're juveniles, right. so the families are brought in as part of that. So, you know, it, it's a lengthy process. Each case can be hours and hours and hours of personal, um, you know, like, like anything accepting responsibility for your actions and then, then moving on to coming up with what what the consequences, what's the plan to go forward, what community service you may be uh, serving to, to compensate the community for your actions. So every case is individually different, but we have uh, 
counseling supports uh, as well as uh, formal counseling, like professional mm -hmm. licensed people. Uh, and, and it's a cooperation between the school district, the police department, and our <coughs> human and youth services program. So it's a lot of time on all of that. I view it as very positive to uh, the alternatives. I know a lot of times it's the you know, families are looking for assistance for how to how do they support their children and how do they parent effectively. And so we do get some youth services enhancement grant money and that goes into higher and listens to the family counselors or psychologists. Any other questions of John on his projects memo? A couple quick one, John. Um, the Miller Richardson, do you have any estimates yet? Have we gotten any pricing or any? Uh, for the softball you're talking about? No, 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 no. no. Miller football Richardson. or baseball? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, football. Field. Football. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, the app the application fee for the EP is going to be about four thousand okay. or so. Uh, we're we're afraid it's going to be higher than that. Yep. Yeah. And the That's actual one of my questions because you last time you said it's going to be very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, the actual uh, anchor engineering had originally said it was going to be like seven thousand total. Mm -hmm. um, the project, we think it's going to be less than that. Yeah. Um, we had some prices that were running more like 50. Okay. Um, okay, good. But we, we need to see what the you. We need to see what the EP uh, will require for that okay. Similarly, do we have any idea at all about the CHS Wall Code Compliance Building Committee? No. no okay. uh, they are meeting on Wednesday night. Okay. Is it on Wednesday? That it was might be Thursday. Thursday so ah, maybe. Thursday night. Yes, I had to clock <laughs> myself. That's right. That's be two places at once. Thank um, you, Jen. So we have no idea about uh, cost impacts. <coughs> uh, the report is available. I could certainly send it out. Um, I have the sense that the chairman of that committee, at Corporate Chesco, has some thoughts. He has been a genius. Uh, to date, uh, I got the sense that he had, he had an approach that he wants to talk to the, engi the uh, consulting engineer in de Blasi to say, could you do this? Uh, and last time he said that, we saved a lot of money. So uh, I'm, I'm anxiously waiting to see uh, what happens at that meeting. Uh, but uh, there's no other word to say, but this community is blessed with uh, people on the right committee at the right time mm -hmm. that Amen. just bring their skills. Uh, and this one's been a, a long, arduous, slow trudging path, but we've gotten, we've saved tens of millions already through the work. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we're just down to wind versus earthquake. And, and I'm surprised that wind is as, as, as bad. As tens of millions? Really, we talk about maybe having to Tear down the school. walls, each wall at a time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so now the worst case is there's some walls that don't have enough in or the right size rebar. So there has to just be another support reinforcing technique, uh, either to to go in and, and put more or more rebar in, so slicing the walls open and doing it, or or having some other tensioning system, because what we're dealing with is the twisting effect of the wind. So all we have to do is kind of make it more rigid. Mm -hmm. um, and there's ways to do that, um, but in some cases it's going to be easier just to go cut the walls open and do this little pieces here. Um, uh, but we're counting right now on uh, the use of sound acoustic testing equipment, and it may be that it's not picking up. It's not like Oak Island where I always find something. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes it, it may just not be able to read it. Uh, so if we go in and may actually be there. So thank you. Um, they're taking a slow method and I, unfortunately we just don't have pricing, but I think we're getting to that stage within probably six months. <coughs> okay. Okay. All right, next item on our agenda, 6F2 is the Connecticut DEEP decision regarding our Bolton Coventry sewer extension. All I can say is extremely discouraging. Um, for a number of years, the WPCA has been trying to work very collaboratively and cooperatively with our Bolton and Vernon um, Lakes Authority uh, sewer extension. Um, 
and the DEP has been kind of saying they didn't like the project from day one, um, and uh, we went through the process that they required us to do to see if anyone was cared, and they only got one response from the Council of Environmental Quality. Uh, the letter was very, very flawed. Uh, it talked about uh, how this sewer could impact uh, and uh, promote economic <coughs> development in Vernon and Bolton. Bolton already has sewers. Vernon is nowhere near this line. Uh, and all sorts of other kind of misrepresentations. We asked, we asked uh, whether we should respond to it, and we're told by DEP not to respond to the letter. And then they cited that as one of the reasons that they are looking for a solution short of saying yes. So in the meantime, they're saying no, and that they will gladly work with us to kind of come up with a solution. Uh, I didn't wait for the council meeting and uh, uh, emailed uh, Senator uh, Champagne and uh, Representative Ackert. Uh, I met with that uh, Representative Ackert today up at the LLB on the uh, grid project. Uh, and he's uh, going to be following up uh, with the EP to try to set up a meeting. Um, in fact, the Department of Environmental Protection has a policy in place, uh, and they were told of that by the Office of Policy <coughs> Management, that if there are no state funds, they have no jurisdiction. And that's the policy that the Council of Environmental Quality is trying to get overturned and using us as the, as the, the case model to do that. So we will pull out OPM's um, policy and say, why aren't you going along with your own policy and, and, and see where that can go. But, go. but uh, we are not happy. And we have invested a lot of time and money to test. They, they made allegations like the system may not be sized right, it may not be able to take it. And we, we spent a lot of time with Jacobson Engineering uh, to do testing, the pressure testing, and capacity testing, and long-term logging. Uh, we, limited the size of the original proposal based on uh, DEP's uh, uh, concerns about uh, impacts, which meant not serving uh, Twin Hills, even though they have failed septic systems or, st or <coughs> struggling septic systems because they have public water. DEP didn't consider uh, raw sep septage uh, from septic systems uh, as a community health hazard because they have public water. Uh, so um, anyway, we're, we're now having to move to a more formal, argumentative uh, uh, st status. And at some point, I don't know how strong the WPCA uh, will want to argue um, this, because they've already spent a lot of money, and I don't know how much further they want to go. So that will be up to maybe a meeting between the council mm -hmm. and the, the council. The council allocated money for the testing and stuff, right. though. Yeah. 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 I mean, to us, um, it makes all the sense in the world to have the more dense development on the roads where all the traffic is. Uh, and, you know, on one side the state is saying, well, why aren't you doing things for attainable housing or, or mixed housing? And that's a possibility there, but you've got to have sewers. And we just, our plant here doesn't have enough capacity to do a lot. Uh, but the traffic volume also, market forces say it's not there. So. Now, the reality is the land that we're talking about, it's not going to be farmland. It's going to be other alternative uses, like one is already an approved to use car lot. Uh, I think we can do better than that. Um, are, are any of the properties, I thought there were in Coventry that are still in soup, that their sewer, uh, their septics are in trouble, and I thought that we were yeah. doing this for other reasons other than economic development. Absolutely. Uh, the 7-Eleven has porta potties out that. Right. I mean, they so don't I mean, this letter they don't doesn't consider any of this. No. You know, so. Uh, it's it's disheartening, and the state has the state that department has had a long-term policy of sewer avoidance. They don't believe in sewers, but sewers and, and in can. their letter they say this looks like you're doing it for economic development purposes. And the answer is partly yes, partly it's uh, uh, solving um, community health hazards in our opinion, but it's also the right spot, it's in our plan of conservation and development. We believe it's also in the state plan of conservation and development, which has it as a village node, mm -hmm. not a farm node. They don't own the land. There's no restrictions on it. Uh, you know, if you, if we say this often at planning and zoning commission meetings, if you don't want something to happen next to you, own it. 
Um, so we're very frustrated that we're, we're being a pawn in the middle of some larger statewide battle. And it's not fair to our taxpayers. It's not fair to the long-term planning processes that we've had. This has been through the, the last plan of conservation and development, which is now 10 years old. We've worked slowly, diligently, cooperatively with the EP to scale things back and to get this letter was, was frankly uh, shocking. Um, and there's other motivations here. And <coughs> um, you know, we do believe that the state, somewhere the state should allow development. We need it. Our tax base is only 3% or 3.6% or so uh, um, of uh, commercial. commercial industrial. And a lot of that are utilities. Uh, so when you really get down to it, we, we're in the bottom 15 of the state for that percentage of our grant list. It's not healthy. It's not sustainable. We need to do better, and we need these resources to do it. So more coming. I haven't heard from Senator Champagne yet, um, <coughs> uh, but uh, Representative Ackerman will be making some phone calls on our behalf to set something up. Thank you. All right, I had asked John to come prepared tonight to give us a good microgrid update with even some history for anybody that's new to the council. So I didn't have a lot of time I to, know. to do that. Unfortunately, uh, early this morning, um, we had also asked uh, uh, Representative Acker to set up a meeting with the uh, Deputy Commissioner of the uh, DEP. Uh, the microgrid company has asked, asked a question on, on uh, conflict within the, the contract that they have. One section says uh, they can't get paid until they hit these milestones. Um, and another says that if the project is in termination, it says if it's termination, that you get paid for expenses uh, that you've incurred. And, and these are changes that the new attorney general put in place this year. Um, actually, uh, not that specific uh, one there. There were some other, they, they actually were able to keep their old contract like. Okay. Uh, but oh. there were some other changes that in terms of the milestone payment, which actually went back one contract ago. But, uh, so there's conflict in, in the language uh, on whether you get paid if you haven't met the milestone if the project's terminated. Uh, the issue is, is that uh, they have to start paying two major pots of money, uh, one $25,000 to every source to just look at the project. Uh, they've given them some courtesy kind of things, but they need to get into full design. And that 25000 is a down payment. They believe it will be another 60000 on top of it by the time they're done with it. Um, and then their own engineering firm that has given some, some kind of, here's how you do it, here's what to expect. And they want to get into kind of the shop drawing stages. And they won't do that until they get, get money at this point. They've done it all at risk. Uh, so we met with... Uh, you, you may want to explain that they've put up all the money uh, to yeah. do everything that they've done so far. Uh, they, their, they've been working on this project for over two years, uh, all at their risk and at their expense. <coughs> Tom and the, board, or the housing authority hasn't paid anything except kind of our own time. Um, and they're just worried at this point that, you know, the serious outflows to other people, other companies, uh, and they want to make sure that if, if Eversource uh, for example, if Eversource's final product is, you know, a lot more than they think it is, and they can't produce a power purchase agreement for us that's willing, that we're willing to pay, and we say no, then they're just out all that money. So, we had a positive meeting today with the, the new Deputy Commissioner, uh, Vicki Hackett, who came over from uh, the Pura regulatory side, so she's familiar with she these types of projects. Mm -hmm. She's going to says, well, you're dealing, you've asked the questions of the accounting office. This is really a legal question. So let's get the DEP's legal terms in because there's two languages, which one governs. Mm -hmm. And if the termination clause governs, then that helps them with their financial backers. And they're, 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 they need assurances because they got to take out you know, loans uh, to fund <coughs> this project. Uh, and the uncertainty is not making the, the project attractive right now. So. Um, but the other language was changed, uh, except they the were, former contract language. Uh, they were able to keep the, 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 the old language, but there's a lot of clocks ticking here too. The federal tax laws changed in, in December on how some of these energy projects are treated, so they really need to get something substantially 
started uh, so that they <coughs> can declare the project started within that, that threshold and then it, then it starts other times. So uh, uh, we appreciate uh, Representative Ackert setting that meeting up and uh, we found out at 8.35 this morning for, that we had a 2 o'clock meeting. Uh, so uh, we had to kind of shuffle things around. But to answer your question, the microgrid project, uh, this is actually be the third council that has, has, has worked on it. Um, and um, the uh, kind of a couple councils ago, the Finance Committee made a recommendation and it, then we already had the transfer to a new council, so now this is gonna be transferred the final decision when we transfer to this council. So the project's been, again, through, started, uh, we kind of went out under two councils ago and the last council did the formal authorization to go ahead at really their first meeting. Uh, based on a recommendation coming forward from <coughs> the prior uh, finance. Uh, and then um, there's been a lot of work uh, by a lot of people uh, and uh, active work with the Housing Authority and the uh, Board of Education uh, facility staff and um, obviously uh, our town staff. So um, keep hitting issues and coming up with them. With, so far we've come up with solutions. Cash flow is going to be one that's very difficult to deal with because it impacts their, our cost. So, uh, so we, you know, the, the only thing that's going on right now is at their risk and their expense, uh, the, one of the partners, Tumalo uh, Engineering, has installed these tiles, or it's, it will be installing them starting this week. They've actually <coughs> tested them all. They'll be starting over at the Housing Authority because uh, we have the least amount of data on, on the individual units there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they're scheduled to be installed on Wednesday uh, uh, this week. Um, and uh, then in some of the major buildings, uh, they'll be doing it. And what that gives is interval data, which will help fine tune things like demand charges. And, and, uh, but it's basically a little, almost a little beater that, that's giving mm -hmm. ener energy characteristics uh, uh, for each of the each of the users. Um, so uh, very Im important information when we're looking at uh, fine-tuning prices. So they have real data versus assumptions. So you had mentioned that they had some hesitancy about um, having a new council and wanted to know if they had our support. I don't know if you need us to it. Be, I think we are probably all very supportive and we'd want to express that to them and make sure that they're comfortable. Unless anybody has any reservations. Well, it's a full great project. Right. Strong throated support. <coughs> I will share that with them, and, and I think we have the same uh, across the, the parking lot from the board. I will we'll let them go online. But obviously, um, we, we have made it clear to them that it, you know it's going to be uh, can't really be increasing our costs. Uh, we can't can't afford that. But uh, the deputy commissioner was. Um, a little taken aback at how <coughs> comprehensive this is compared to the other microgrids. I mean, two <coughs> schools, a, a shelter, uh, fire, police, communications, 80 units of elevated housing, fueling, uh, uh, emergency operations, uh, communications. Peace yeah. uh, so, you know, the only thing it doesn't really have is. Uh, you know, if we put in an ATM, then we have the banking company <laughs> and a grocery store. Uh, but um, so those are the only two that uh, we don't have, and it's a much different scale than all the other projects, <coughs> and it's so compact compared to um, um, Woodbridge. I think it's Woodbridge put in one, but the distance is like a mile between some of the resources, and we're really compact. Uh, so it should be more economical. And we are actually linking them with uh, the Board of Ed got a uh, E-rate to run fiber uh, and they're going underground to go all the way from uh, um, the grammar school all the way to the Robertson School. Um, and it will end up being cheaper than our contract with, uh, uh, with uh, Charter uh, because uh, getting the federal E-rate dollars and they're microtunneling so they can bore instead of hanging it because um, the, the utilities are not meeting the law of, of giving a, an attachment uh, permit within 30 days. They're stretching out the months, and they have to make it. <coughs> they may be starting work in, in March. From out of Kansas coming in, and they can they can bore for 500 feet at a time. 
and they slide the conduit in, put the fiber through. Um, and so we're teaming them up. I've made the contacts with this company called Lanarac and the microgrid people because they need the fiber for the controls and we happen to be going by. So it's all about connections. Let's see what you did there. So more to come. They're offering to begin at any time, but we really want to have a, an opportunity for more news. Uh, and I think we'll have that over the next several weeks. Um, so I can move on to the hydraulic treatment survey. Um, this is the preliminary look. Uh, it will be according <coughs> to the final report. Um, this is from um, the company that did the survey work, the, the, uh, not the application. Um, so they're a subcontractor, uh, but instead of waiting for the February report, we got this early draft. Um, so the good news is the uh, Hydrilla is in retreat. Um, back to kind of some of the original qualities. <coughs> the benthic barrier is still <laughs> an issue that nobody's figured out whether it's better to leave it or, or, or take it out. Uh, uh, partly now it has dirt on it with some good plants that are growing on top of it. Uh, Dr. Cortman has offered to remove it. So uh, before this spring, uh, we'll have to make a decision on um, getting it out because we, as, as you're probably about to say, the turions uh, may be growing under that and we want to make sure they get treated. I was actually going to ask what the area of that's covered currently. Do you know? Do you have an idea? Uh, How big are the barriers? Uh, they're not huge. Yeah, I didn't think that there are many. I mean, I, I think you could take them out in sections. Yeah. I mean, it, it's basically a really rugged uh, kind of garden barrier, like you, you put the stuff weeds coming Weed control. Out. Yeah. So, um, you know, you could probably cut it out in sections to get it off. Um, but, um, there's been a lot of now there's even arguments about where it is between some people. Uh, I believe it's up on the island on that side of the lake. Uh, some people are saying it's down by um, Woodland, but I think it's up there. But um, I think they mapped it when they put it in, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, I think all that as we move forward in, in, into February, we're supposed to have the full report uh, and recommended treatment plan. Um, when I did talk to Dominic from Solitude a couple weeks ago, a month ago or so, he did say he's they're going to be recommending whole lake treatments for at least another year or two. Um, we could uh, see how these, you know, see how it goes. And you know, the good news is that the good plants <coughs> seem to be tolerating it and the side effects of some of the uh, other nasty stuff that people don't like it are also getting killed off. So the lake is benefiting. Uh, uh, so uh, keep, keep looking at it. Yes, Lisa. Yep. John, can you also give us an update on what's happening in Eagleville? Uh, we did the fan work treatment, mm -hmm. um, and I haven't had a follow up on that, so I'll have to get that. Okay. Thanks. John? I uh, just wanted to echo about the benthic barrier thing uh, <coughs> after having paid attention to it over the last couple of years and of course I wasn't around when they were put in but after having heard the various reports and things I, you know I'd, I'd like to see them removed just to make sure that the treatment gets down to the underground storage of the hydro plants so for whatever just putting that out there <laughs> Okay. Uh, next item is uh, as part of the sustainable CT, the town qualified to have this resilience uh, building workshop um, done, and we brought town staff together to spend a uh, number of hours to go through uh, kind of a tabletop ex exercise to talk about what we see as uh, you know, potential threats. I think you can see that public works is clearly involved because trees are talked about a lot. Uh, <laughs> but it is a serious issue for us. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so based on this, uh, I think we've done, as a committee, a, a good job of awareness and, and, and working on a lot of issues and it maps out some things that we need to work on going forward. Uh, but um, I think it's a, a, a good document that will be incorporated into our plan conservation and development as an appendix. I agree. Yes, it's a great, uh, great report. Thank you. And 
priceless even better. <laughs> free. Free. There you go. Yep, he's free. It's close to that fifty dollars for items. <laughs> well, there's a lot of information in here. I think there's a lot of good information. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think it does say that we're doing a, a pretty good job, mm -hmm. you know, which is it's also good to hear. Um, but it, it does always tell us what you know what we need to concentrate on, and, and that is helpful. Having an outsider come in to to help guide you. And if you watch the paper, you see a lot of other towns have been doing this, but not only in our state, <coughs> it's also uh, Massachusetts and Rhode Island, this group is uh, working on it, so. John, will we be um, trying to prioritize the, well, so I, I was looking at the Coventry Annex for the Capital Region National Hazard. There's a lot of good projects in here. Will, will we be prioritizing those and then trying to put forward a detailed plan? I, I think, year? yes, uh, that should be looked at as we go into our capital budgeting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, especially some of the dam issues and uh, oh, culverts and <laughs> water dams. <laughs> oh, got you. Understood. Um, a lot of the ones that hold water. I got you. <laughs> yeah. And, Very good. And then, no, even with that, there's going to be a lot of controversy because uh, the a lot of state uh, projects now are eliminating dams when they can, and that would be like no pond. Uh, I could see them ask us to remove it. Very good. Thank you. All right. And Not I that they're going to ask you to remove it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I asked John to include the CCM convention information in our packet. Um, I am interested in attending, and I know it's kind of short notice, but is there any other council members that wanted to attend? There, so it's two days. Yeah. So the first day is the important day. Yeah. Um, that's where they have the uh, trades people, uh, the exhibit hall. You can learn a lot from vendors about what's out there. Uh, and they, they have a series of workshops that you'll have a hard time choosing uh, from. And uh, I strongly recommend anyone who's available to go. It's very useful and helpful. Um, and, and we do have money because I didn't go to my national conference this year, so I'll be glad Thanks. to share, share uh, those uh, money for your registration fee. And, um, I'm actually comped this year because uh, I'm on the board. Uh, so all I've right. Hmm. So considering that many of these types of municipal governing bodies are made up of volunteers, many of us who work outside of our homes, um, has there ever been? I mean, I could never show up on a weekday to this yeah. conference. <laughs> I lose my job. Has there ever been discussion <coughs> to hold these on? A, Saturday. Saturday? They hold some CCM trainings on Saturdays. I know in January there's a budget workshop that they're holding on a Saturday morning that somewhere, awesome. which I get yeah. that information, but the, the conference itself is not normally. Yeah. yeah. They probably get a cheaper rate on the facility on a weekday. Hey, I'm doing this for a really cheap rate. They can do this. <laughs> I hear you. I'm just, <laughs> to make sure I do this really well for the money I'm making. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, and, and I know the cave ones are on weekends. December three and four. So maybe as other things come up, if there's a way to give us some advance. They do. Notice, they do. Uh, that registration money. You they do elected uh, uh, official days. workshops. And, uh, those they're doing some for the first time at this conference too. But they also will do them. That's what yeah. said. Uh, that information out That'd be great. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to say I would like to go, but I can't. Mm -hmm. I actually have expressed that I would like to go. Okay. I learned a lot last time I went, yeah. and I look forward to doing, doing so as well. Going. You emailed it to us. It's not actually attached in here. Like, I printed the whole packet, but I don't, I can't find it. <laughs> uh, uh, that's because I put a link to it, which yeah. doesn't ah. generate in your so we'll packet. You have to okay. click on the link to see it. We'll register you uh, for both both of you for the first day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second day is uh, it's also uh, just a CCM board meeting. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the CCM board, so we're good here. And then Marijuana and then the, the, the board meeting. Yeah, and, and the board meeting. Wait, wait, sorry, wait, what? what? No. First they enjoy <laughs> marijuana. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you're <laughs> thinking. Yeah, it's, uh, it helps them with the meeting. So they, they are bringing it together, and it, it's unfortunate the way they, they split this up, but they are bringing in the national panel on uh, um, the ramifications of legalizing marijuana. Uh, what experiences, like, are they bringing in somebody from Colorado to talk about what the hidden? Mm -hmm. It's oh, not wow. just the money that you're generating. Right. What's mm. the public uh, uh, impact? Mm. 
uh, in the weeds. So, um, and then at CCM, they're also going to be talking about a, uh, the property tax uh, program that they're, they've hired three consultants to work on uh, a plan to reduce property taxes statewide by 25%, uh, which means um, to do that, revenues have to come from somewhere else. Uh, and part of the solution, long term, they got to address pension issues because uh, you can't just. Oh, no, this is going to be a revenue neutral decision, right? <laughs> uh, it could be. It, you know, it could be revenue neutral to. I wouldn't anticipate that. To, think well, to the state taxpayers as a whole, but to whom, you know, oh. you know, revenue has to come from somewhere, mm -hmm. or you, unless you're able to reduce your expenses dramatically. And they're talking about some ways to do that, too. Uh, but some alternative revenues that they're, they're uh, so it's a next step building on the report is this is something completely different report where they looked at alternative revenue sources uh, but uh, I've warned them that don't count on just getting that pledge of reducing uh, or reality of reducing uh, property taxes by you know, over 25 percent without also getting uh, spending restrictions because you know, great. you can't have flexibility to just next day increase it back up. And then they're not going to take the motor vehicle money to the state and go that way, which would offset the savings on property taxes. Yeah. <laughs> so they're still working on a plan, but they brought in um, some national consultants uh, from, uh, I worked on the Connecticut Tax Panel uh, from Georgia Tech and uh, uh, a group out of uh, Massachusetts. Uh, and also a, not a uh, not-for-profit pension advisory group that's uh, looking at state pension plans and then changes that need to happen with the state pensions uh, going forward at least. So. Okay. All right. Next item is 6F7, Crumbling Concrete Foundation Forum Recap. So there was an interesting forum in, uh, in uh, Ellington uh, a couple weeks ago. And this is the... Uh, information on that um, and just the <coughs> tidbit that we are saying is the state loan couple bell loan program is also now operational uh, for people have on, on reimbursed expenses uh, for things that are not covered like uh, tax coaches uh, sidewalks sidewalks a lot uh, but it's a very low interest loan that can help people uh, pull the whole package together septic connections everything else utilities septic utilities uh, I've also just moved along, uh, included uh, information in the Human Services Department uh, on the Adopt a Family and Holiday Food Program. Today is the deadline, but they'll certainly take things this week. Mm -hmm. uh, if people want to uh, adopt a family for uh, uh, Christmas period or donate food for either Thanksgiving or Christmas. Um, a couple years ago, we made the change. You're not given a family for uh, for Christmas. For food, uh, we're allowing people to, you just donate food that you think is appropriate and we put it out and people kind of go like shopping. Mm -hmm. So they can, if they don't, they're not given green beans if they don't like green beans. Uh, right. So they, they can kind of go shopping through and pick up what they, their family needs. So it's, uh, it's also a very personalized thing and it was very much appreciated last year when we did it that way. Mm -hmm. Take money donations? or Absolutely. Yeah. Gift yeah. cards. And, um, they also started to, uh, you know, do the bell ringing signups. So. Through human services. Through human services. Uh, and just um, some corporate places are are restricting uh, bell ringing uh, for different reasons. One of the customers that complained to some don't like the philosophical uh, bank behind Salvation Army. Um, but again, most 90% of the money stays here, so we're not really part of the Salvation Army. Uh, but, uh, but Wicked Slice has, uh, is allowing us to win here this year, and we believe that will be a very popular place, you know, high traffic. So we're appreciative of them doing that. John, on the adopted family, it um, actually says it's through November 20th they're accepting collections. 
He's, I think he said today was the last day. Uh, form I have says 18th, so. Uh, I, I read it. So this one says 18. Oh, this one says 18. Oh, I see. So there's a conflict. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I said we can do They'll take the donation, I'm yes. pretty sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, <coughs> uh, just uh, Christmas in the Village is coming up. Just a reminder that it's a, a week later this year, because otherwise it would have been right after Thanksgiving, and I thought it was a little too much. Um, I want to give a shout out to our uh, North Coventry Volunteer Fire Department that uh, took some of our surplus lights from when we had the big tree here and took our ladder truck and was down there on Sunday uh, adding extra lights to the tree at, uh, at the First Church. Yes. Uh, they were there for a couple of three or four hours. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're excited that, that uh, we're able to get rid of some stuff. Uh, put <laughs> it bags and make it go to uh, uh, a, a good cause that uh, becomes a community event. And this year, uh, the Lions Club is, is really active, and uh, they they will have Miss Candy's studio uh, do the light turning on. But uh, they did say if the council wants to make any announcements there or, or presentation or speech. And I'll not work us into the schedule, but uh, so that's really up to, up to you if you want to have a council representative uh, there. It was a council event, and we kind of let it go to the community for a couple reasons. It's always was a little awkward for us to have a Christmas tree on town property, uh, um, but it is a community event, uh, and uh, it's probably more appropriate than they kind of wanted it down there. Um, and we'll still have Santa's sleigh, which is <coughs> less. little less of a, uh, of a thing, um, and uh, we'll uh, go off there. Okay. And next, we have a paper about certified youth sports administrator. There's going to be a class on Wednesday, March 18th, 2020, at our Millbrook place. Who do people reach out to sign up for that, John? This is, this is really uh, for rec, um, mm -hmm. more for rec programs um, and we are the first NACE certified community in Connecticut um, and um, now we're being asked to, to share our experiences and help host uh, uh, this type of uh, things but uh, obviously um, youth sports has had a lot of issues that they need to address both safety and be uh, sideline behavior and coaching behavior uh, and This is kind of what, what, what's going on. So okay. we're pleased to be the host of it, and uh, uh, there'll be people from Connecticut. And so is the know. website the only place to? Sign yeah, up? I think that's so. What so it's it. it's through uh, you know it's a Connecticut place. Recreation and Parks Association. Yeah. So it's crpa.com. If anybody can't see them. How many seats are in the place for something? We we could fit about sixty five people there, and just a, just a little footnote. Uh, at long last, we finally have internet there. <laughs> oh, um, it took us a while to get it through the conduit. I had to drill through the wall. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's there now. Okay. Very good. John, you had asked to have 6F11 Coventry Hi. Winter Farmers Market removed for discussion. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say Sundays, 11 to 2, of the high school cafeteria and hallway. There's more than just food there. I think it's something that is a, a great thing to continue that fine farmer's market tradition in Coventry through the winter. I just want to bring it to people's attention. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we have no unfinished business yet. <laughs> <laughs> Relish the moment, <laughs> right? <laughs> Under new business, 8A, 19 slash 20 dash 26, review of current and pending town projects. Uh, you had a folder in front of you tonight, and John handed out the same handout. So you have it in two forms, horizontal and vertical. So the, the, the uh, vertical one allows you to take notes. Yeah. Uh, I've asked Amanda to come up to the table because we have a lot going on. And before you got into the goal setting, I thought I'd try to give you an update of uh, all, all that's on our plate right now. Uh, and um, this is very informal. so. 
it's okay to interrupt me and ask questions as we go forward. Uh, I, I handed no, out to you at the beginning of the meeting. This it came one. with this piece of paper. This is the one he gave me. Okay. No. Oh, there's another one. There we go. There you go. I got three of them. <laughs> so you must think I read a lot or something. So the purpose, my purpose, is to get you familiarized with the current projects, um, to allow some input into priority setting um, um, as we go forward, because there are some things that are carried over. It may no longer be a top priority from you, or some things that are not a, a are not on here would become a priority. Um, you need to look at resource allocation and project needs. Uh, we are, again, I would say, if you talk to our staff, we are really at a high stress level trying to keep up with the, these projects. And you'll see as we go through why. So we don't have a lot of other resources available to allocate to new projects. So there's a couple ways to do that. You, you contract out for services, you add more staff, or you cut out, cut some projects out or delay projects. Um, and there may be even more. Um, so what are the future budget implications of these projects? And, uh, and I'll look at the, one of the primary purposes, and probably should have put it on top, is to assist in council goals setting. So I broke in the discussions into these various uh, <coughs> topical areas, the kind of public works, which are gonna focus on roads, bridges, bonding, some personnel issues, buildings and facilities, uh, administrative things that that uh, really are, are going to come under a lot of review or, or start usually with the steering committee, uh, ordinances, uh, policies, uh, planning and zoning, economic development, what's going on with them, public safety uh, issues, so police, fire, emergency uh, management, uh, kind of general government to catch all category record parks and then some other things and some events that you should be aware of. So public works, I could probably spend an hour and a half on this and it won't. Uh, but we have a lot of grant projects coming. Uh, we have the Swamp Road uh, Intersection Alignment Project, <coughs> which is at the public information stage. Uh, at that meeting, there's going to be some uh, earnest discussion about what we do in Northfields Road. Um, we told them uh, we had one other public involvement meeting before. We told them we get into design. Uh, the design says for us to proceed ahead with doing a link between uh, the current Northfields and the new Swamp Road. Uh, that we would need a sightline exception on 44 for cars that are coming down 44, turning on to turning on to uh, coming from Bolton, uh, turning on to the new Swamp Road and a car exiting that, mm -hmm. theoretically, you could be turning out of the, out of the uh, Northfields connector and a car rounding this corner with some outrageous speed uh, and, and have an accident. Uh, you have that same issue with the existing Northfields road in reality. So our local traffic authority could document uh, that this is actually a betterment from the existing co condition, but we can't meet the exist existing engineering standards, partly because the, the roads are just built too close. So we need to talk about that and the implications of, of that connector. Last time we talked about it, some wanted to do nothing as the solution. Uh, that road traffic is going to get worse to the point where there's going to be just be more accidents of people jumping to, to go out. Uh, the grant would cover the left uh, uh, right hand turn out only, no left hand turn in or out. Uh, uh, and some people didn't like that because they would have to go to Ford Road. Uh, so half the time it wouldn't be a change, and, and half the time you have to go, go take the new connector, new road all the way to Ford Road and come back. So you know, we'll have that discussion, but ultimately it's not going to be a, just a vote. It's going to have to be a, a kind of a policy decision and, and, uh, and a long-term decision. But uh, our engineer says the status quo is really not a good option. Uh, because it's just going to get worse and we're going to have more and more accidents. Uh, bridges, you know, uh, so I'm sorry, we also then have the South Street uh, project, which uh, is reconstruction section of South Street uh, from uh, kind of in front of the, the homestead uh, where the road has really failed. And I will just um, 
and Wallace there will be putting in an appropriate sidewalk from the roundabout to the to basically uh, the strong port is here. Uh, um, that project is really slow. Uh, we've done all our responses to Connecticut DOT and we're waiting for them to go ahead. At that point, then we have to hire a designer to design it. Um, my guess is at this point that will be a late summer, fall project versus uh, we are hoping it was going to be a spring project. I just don't see a hit in spring. Um, and uh, coming up in March of this year, they're going to open up the next round of applications for LOSIP grants. Uh, Todd Penny, our engineer, is on that uh, transportation committee at Croc, so we get the inside information. Get people on your right committees. Uh, our, our recommendation, uh, and uh, we don't need to make that decision right now, but as part of all sessions, uh, staff's recommendation is that we go back to South Street and look at the squiggles and the intersection with uh, Swamp Road, uh, where there's zero sight line. And I urge you kind of maybe before a goal session to, to go look at that. We had a stop sign. People go through it all the time. Mm -hmm. But we have so many accidents, accidents on the going down the curves. We had $225,000 of money when we were with WinCog. And when they transferred us to Capital Region Council of uh, Governments, we lost that money. So uh, I've told them that we're expected to be made whole. So I think we're going to, uh, and this pot of money would be a lot more. So we could do a bigger project, which would actually include uh, kind of doing some sight line car carving back, which would allow us to be a little more aggressive in those curves. We're only able to kind of do modest curve, curve changes, but we can actually acquire land here for slope rights. Uh, and also probably close off Swamp Road Extension, which is a very deep decline down, and just you know, make, that's a driveway. You know, we don't need it anymore. Uh, and, um, Maybe then also look at a couple other uh, issues on Swamp Road. Uh, there's a, a vertical dip that we could maybe carve off as, as, as part of this. So the maximum grant's like three million. Uh, and again, the lots of grant is a 100% grant. Uh, we have to pay for the engineer. Uh, so I would like to get moving fairly soon to get an application started to look at so we can kind of see what the options are. Uh, we would go with Jacobson Engineering because they did the, the original work. They already have a lot of survey work uh, for the, the original application, and they're very uh, knowledgeable in the lots of program. They did the Jones Crossing. If we applied work. for these particular, are we cutting out any others that might be that, That's the discussion we'll have to have yeah. in, in more uh, earnest. Not every road is eligible uh, for lots of it has to be an urban road. So uh, Swamp Road, uh, South Street, and we just, in anticipation of, of, of keeping our options open, I, I was able to work to get Daily Road reclassified. Um, that's huge. Yes. But Daily Road, uh, there's there's a couple things that we want to do there. Uh, but we put on rubberized chip seal, which has like a seven or eight year life. So we are planning to, to kind of prioritize that as a future project. Uh, so we made that choice uh, by putting a higher grade chip seal that to make it last until we can reconstruct a big sections of it. Um, but Daily Road, kind of right um, this end of it, uh, there's a little curve and a, and a kind of a, a cliff that we need to cut back. And then the intersection, a couple of intersections of uh, Lake Road and Knollwood Road, we need to try to make sightline better by lowering and raising. So it's a road profile. There's, it's going to be the best we can get without, you know, taking on homes. <laughs> uh, so uh, that that is the other one that rises uh, higher to level. And then there's other sections of South Street that we can we we okay. look at. Right. Uh, but there's not a lot of roads that we have. Uh, <coughs> and you uh, can't put in for several projects and only get awarded some new. You, you, uh, you, could, you could do smaller projects. Yeah. Um, they, they, there's, a th I think, a $300,000 minimum because okay. the amount of process. And, and I saw staff time, too, on that. Yeah. trying to suggest that you've got unlimited staff time. Right? But we were able to get two in one year. Okay. Uh, that equaled that $3 million cap, so we kept breaking things up. Okay. Um, so 
not in the world, but the South Street project, I think, could easily become a fairly expensive project if we do it right. And we don't want to make it a raceway, but it already is, and we already have, you know, it seems like every other week now we're pulling a car off this curve, and I don't know why. No, that's where my wife had yeah. their accident. Yeah, that's dangerous stuff. Uh, um, bridges, uh, Farley Lane, uh, we're in the final stages of, uh, of design for that. Um, the last WCC meeting, local education, uh, local emergency coordinating committee, uh, they asked us to try to add a, uh, a uh, dry hydrant, so we'll at least figure out where. It may not be project eligible, but we want to at least make sure that the project allows for it to be added. Um, Hop River Road Bridge, uh, the state uh, is going to be doing the design for that. That's, uh, so Folly Lane is probably this summer. Uh, Hop River Road is probably two summers uh, away. Hop River Trail, uh, and I'll just keep saying this over and over again, this is a state project to replace a bike bridge. Uh, we have uh, no involvement in it except maybe letting them use a piece of our land for their, their trailer. Uh, uh, but it's an amazingly expensive project because it's re removing abutments from the river and actually doing some fish ponding uh, where the culverts were to promote uh, uh, the fish life. Uh, but it could easily be a $4 million project. Um, paid for by the state. Not, not <laughs> Say us. it again, John. Yeah. <laughs> not us. Who's paying for that? Exactly. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, but the state? Okay. I, I like the idea of, of having. Uh, trail connectivity. I'm not so sure what we have on, along the road <laughs> would be adequate. And frankly, keep it on the road and then replace our bridge with a bike lane like, on it, uh, mm. uh, which would be less of a span because it cuts directly across versus diagonally across. Uh, and that bridge needs to happen too, but they did want to consider it. They want it on the trail. And I, I get it, uh, but. Culverts. Uh, I mentioned to you that we have a culvert that's failing on Broadway. Uh, it seems to be a little bit stabilized right now. Uh, right as you head down towards uh, uh, North River, okay. uh, right kind of near those ponds. Uh, this is right out there. Yeah. And uh, a section of it, probably 10 feet long of the bottom of it, kind of just sunk. And, and the road went down, and we kind of paved over a little bit. Um, it needs to be replaced, and it's going to be a very expensive project because uh, the water continuously flows through that. So it's a dewatering project, uh, uh, expensive, and there's no good place to do it. So we're looking at alternatives, whether we can somehow slip line it. Uh, you know, it seems to be it's not getting worse right now but it's something we're going to have to address over the next several years. <coughs> uh, we've got a couple projects, uh, culverts down on, uh, uh, on uh, Stage, Stage Road. Road. Uh, Stage Road, we had tried to get the state to accept it while they were doing their project. Uh, they wouldn't buy it. Uh, I'm not so sure there isn't a way that we could shorten Stage Road to avoid that culvert. Um, mm -hmm. Go through the town green and have a standard uh, intersection. There's other ways of, of, of closing it and having State Road become a cul-de-sac. I think there's a lot of people that that until like their that. traffic lights, until their traffic lights coming out of Highland Park, that use that as a as a roundabout uh, because sometimes during rush hour you just can't cross traffic. So they take a right, <coughs> they go right down and come back. Uh, Parker Bridge uh, um, uh, and uh, South Street uh, near Willow Glen and also in Bunker Hill we have culverts all that and those are uh, in our capital improvement program. So um, we may be able to squeak one of them out uh, right now um, and I want to give at some point a, a bond uh, uh, project status report. Um, we're about a third of the way through spending. Um, uh, Northfields will be the big 
ticket and we're starting to do drainage work and we're hoping this summer we'll be able to go up and chew the roads up and put them, regrade them and put them back down. Um, so uh, we said it was going to be a three year project and we believe that we're on track for, for that. Um, tree removal, <laughs> you can hear again. Say that one again. That's one of my pet <laughs> things. <laughs> I think we need to focus on that in the budget, so I'm just wondering. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, we really, uh, well, the, the bond project is really, really helpful for us, uh, but it's also what's causing us to be a little over, overloaded. And we are using contractors we, we can, but there's just much more work when you're spending around uh, trying to do it uh, uh, in a wise manner. Uh, tree removal, uh, you're going to just keep hearing this from everybody. Uh, when we hire a tree crew, it's 1,500 to 1,800 a day. Uh, depending, you know, we, we had to take down a tree over in High Street that was $4,000 just for that tree. Mm -hmm. It was a really tall crane. Uh, we didn't want it to fall on the house. Mm -hmm. uh, so Have your money for the year is gone already. Mm -hmm. It's October 31st. We've mm -hmm. exhausted the, the amount that was in the operating budget and we put an additional 25 in capital. Um, I think we have some loans that we might be able to dip into for trees and trails, but at a third of the way through the year, our tree is oh, We did put money on loans for trees, and of course, mm -hmm. that's not released yet. Mm -hmm. So, you see it from everybody. This is, you know, CCM has asked the state to declare a state of emergency because of um, both gypsy, gypsy moths and, and the ash borer, emerald ash borer. Uh, it's it's a severe problem, and it's going to become a crisis, really a crisis, within the next two summers. Mm -hmm. That's when the emerald ash borer impacts are going to really. They're there already. They just haven't totally killed the tree, but give it another year and a half. Um, our CIP, uh, I think, as part of the the this year, we we have a truck. We got the fifty thousand dollar check uh, for uh, do an early replacement to the. Uh, Energy Fund, and Mark Kiefer has applied for another one uh, for next year. Uh, roadside mower, uh, we're getting ready to order if we didn't order it today. Uh, we're trying a slightly different mower uh, than the uh, typical roadside mower. Uh, typical, or typical roadside mower has this big far reach uh, mm -hmm. thing. Articulating arm type of thing. This one doesn't go out as far and it's more of a, an arch and that comes out and the mower rides back and forth on a steel beam. So it doesn't have as long a reach, but it can come in and, and back and forth. So, so it, it, you can trip closer, especially on the other side of the guardrails mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, so uh, Mark Owens and Mark Kiefer have uh, gone up to Upper State New York to see the demonstration of it. And uh, they could double the, double the time productivity. for productivity. Wow. Um, our staff is, our, our workers are not as convinced, but <laughs> up, Upper State uh, New York, uh, they just, they're buying them. And they like, like it's called the Tiger uh, Wildcat. I'm sorry, it's called yes. a Wildcat. Uh, uh, so we could, you know, show you a video on it. Uh, it's also a little less funny. Um, Let's put that in the plus column, please. Yeah. <laughs> but the real issue is we think we can do it faster. Now, the That's reality true. is we will have about a 12-foot reach, and the existing one can go 16 to 18 feet. But we don't do 16 to 18 no. feet. Uh, we, we, used to, we, we did for a couple of years with Walter Vitsanko as a public works director, and we just couldn't keep it up. So right now, typically, we, we're doing one sweep, you know, one, one kind of lane. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that's all we can do. So there'll be a, a couple spots where we may have s some issues, but overall we think that this will be a better, better, more productive, uh, and very clean, and, and there's, the mower can accept different heads, and, uh, and we're, so we'll be buying two types of heads, and there's about an hour change over the heads. The other ones can do it, but it's about a day and a half mm -hmm. change. So there's a lot of productivity here. Uh, and. Um, so we could actually, if we could get down to fine, fine mowing, that can add a fine mowing head. Uh, so we're giving it a try. Uh, we believe that it's the right decision. I, I spent some time here myself and, and, and then driving around town and looking about what type of reaches we may not be able to get. And I really didn't find any. Uh, 
I'm sure there will be some, uh, but in some case, head will say we can do some hand work. You said something about a fine mowing head. Is there also like a flail head yeah, or yeah, whatever? Yeah, that's yeah. the main one? And that's the one we'll be using. Okay. There's also a brush, uh, brush hog. Oh, okay. So I think we're getting a brush hog and a flail. Uh, the fine that mowing sense. Yeah. My brush hog thing going to the trails. It could, yes. I think I heard somebody I know talking about wanting one of those for the trails. Uh, we have an attack. Yeah, we have a, we have, Actually, it's, it's like a skid. Our tool cat, um, which is a, like a bop cat, except it's not big, tall, or all cage. It looks like a, a John Deere kind of utility vehicle, but it has all hydraulic attachment. Take all our bop cat attachments, and we have a mower for that. For, and that's what they did the disc golf uh, brush clearing with. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it goes off the back of the uh, of that little trailer. What's that tool thing cat. called? Toolcat. Yeah, it's the coolest thing, I tell you. And the part of that, in today's paper, somebody, or actually, I'm sorry, it's in the Facebook world, um, <laughs> they, somebody was saying, well, why is the Board of Ed want snow removing equipment? The Toolcat is what we do our sidewalks with, and the Board of Ed wants one for their sidewalks, mm -hmm. and I will support it if they'll take care of the sidewalks out in front here, because we can't necessarily get get to them on a timely basis. Uh, so there might be some bargains, but they're not cheap, but they're very versatile for lots of other other, other things. And it's one of the best the, the things that we've bought, because uh, it just does everything. Uh, and radios, uh, police radios are almost done. Um, there's a couple of little fine tunings and putting one in my car. Uh, I miss having uh, police uh, contacts in my car, and that's coming. That was part of the deal. Um, We're also transferring radios to the public works, uh, and then the public works will be joining uh, the system. That's in our budget this year. We just didn't have time this summer to spend any staff time on that, uh, so over this winter we'll, we'll be working on. Um, they're already approved by the state uh, to be uh, joined in that. Mm -hmm. They'll have a, s a subsection, but the police and, and public works can talk to each other. We're still. Uh, working through the best communication means between fire and, and uh, police. Uh, right now they can go through dispatch agencies and there's a couple channels that they may be able to, to, to work, work on. So that's something that still work in progress. There's several options they haven't decided what the best. The coverage been is advertised? Uh, it's, it's much really better than we have yeah. and uh, I haven't heard complaints. So, and it's, it seems to still be getting better. Uh, as they add other radios uh, around the state. Uh, so those are the, there's other things in Nurture's Capital, but those are the big big ones that are public works I want to talk about. Transfer station, uh, scale is operational. Uh, we still have some, for some reason, some concrete uh, blocks that are crumbling. Go figure. Uh, so if we stay there, we're gonna have to do some uh, repairs and that, that kind of ties in also with uh, what's happening with softball. So uh, mm -hmm. we'll just put it on hold for now until we look at softball and that scale is <coughs> relocatable. Uh, road swap concerns. Uh, we now have uh, uh, one household that we're buying water for while it's being investigated. Uh, we have another one that they're meeting tomorrow uh, with, uh, uh, third level. So uh, we're a little bit more suspicious about that, but we're we're bringing Anchor Engineering in to be with DEP uh, on that uh, to see whether we can not give those, that household water. Uh, with DEP, you're guilty until you can prove yourself innocent. Um, so this is a statewide issue uh, that is blooming. Uh, and, and we have a very conservative salt policy compared to some other towns we do. Uh, adjust our sanders a lot. We have policies. We check the tonnage for how much goes down per storm mm -hmm. uh, and per road mile. So if we have some quality control uh, issues uh, to make sure they're not over overusing that. So we have been sensitive. We have a written policy on it. Uh, but it is a statewide issue uh, that a lot of wells are getting higher salt content. Uh, some of the houses all have home water softeners. 
that if they dump those in their backyard, they could be polluting their own wells. Others may be running sanding business, sanding and snowplowing businesses, and uh, where they're parking there, their own trucks may have issues. Uh, <coughs> I'm not dismissing that it's a legitimate concern that we have to be careful of and thinking about, but in the meantime, we may be buying water for people. Uh, wastewater treatment plant for our treatment <coughs> plant. Um, the state has not renewed our permit for, I don't know, maybe a, a decade. They haven't reviewed it either um, <laughs> until now. We pay them the 500 bucks a year. It's automatically renewed without comment. Uh, but it's not really a renewal, it's a, we're, we're getting to it. So about a month and a half ago, uh, for the first time, maybe because they're mad at us for something else, they came and did an inspection. Uh, just happened to be a mountain wall where we're talking about the whole thing. Uh, we haven't heard the results of that, but it's, it's very likely that uh, we're not going to meet the new standards that have, have come in after we got an original permit for Nitrogen. For phosphorus and nitrogen, and if they get up to pharmaceuticals, which the state hasn't adopted yet, nobody in the state will, will be able to treat pharmacies. Don't flush your pills. Uh, uh, so we're going to wait and see what what that happens, and at that point, we'll have to enter into some negotiations with the state on whether we uh, decide to connect to the romantic. Uh, which is a long water pipe, and a lot of money, and they want an upfront million dollar payment. Uh, uh, or we have to do uh, denitrification uh, at our plant, which is, would also be a lot of money. And there's about a, currently there's about a 40% coverage for grants for that. Uh, but this, it, it will be a big ticket item. Wait, this is stuff that just never goes away. That, you're talking about that's this. That's what I was going to say, but why hasn't there been planning? I mean, this is not new. It's not new that our wastewater treatment plant is not, a, I mean, it hasn't been up to standards or met anything for more than a decade, and we're just, we've just been on borrowed time. We have a so, plan. Well, maybe we need to start moving. <laughs> well. I mean, I know it's a big investment, but mm -hmm. it seems like we need to be a little more proactive at this point. Well, we're really being reactive at this point, but proactively reactive. It's not a new situation. And eventually it's going to be limiting us in terms of what we can do in our village and in terms of economic development. Well, no? There's no guarantee that we're going to be able to increase capacity. Unless we hook up to Willamantic. Not even then. There's pipe capacity issues in Willamantic. We might have to replace pipes going through Willamantic. Well, last time I was part of one of these conversations, it was lots of romantic capacity, but it's been the plants, <laughs> not the pipes. Okay. So I know, just think it's a little it's a thirty million dollar issue. It's hard to be moaning and groaning about deep when we know we've been out of. I guess this is going on the record. I mean, we've known this is an issue for a long time. I mean, we probably and, should take and some we have, steps. We have a study, but they we have no guidance from them. If, if we started spending money and they changed the rules, then you're in real trouble. That's why we're not doing it. Um, capacity is an issue down here. So we, we have limits to what we can do. And at some point, you have to decide how much is the capacity worth. I mean, There are alternative types of systems like uh, community septic, you know, mm -hmm. modern community septic systems that may be a better alternative than concentrating waste. Solution to pollution is dilution. You know, once you concentrate it in a treatment plant, it is harder to treat than spreading it out and, and treating it locally. Old Saybrook was under DEP order to install a centralized sewer system. They went to court and they came up with alternative systems and DEP ultimately won. Uh, DEP got the, the, the solution done without having a, a treatment plan. So they, mm. they, they complied with the, the regulations by decentralizing. Um, so there are alternatives that need to be looked at. And centralized treatment plants are not necessarily the way to go anymore. Um, and 
as technology has improved, denitrification alternatives have, have increased dramatically. So had we done something... What does that mean? Take, take the nitrogen out. Nitrogen, uh, sewage has a high nitrogen level. Nitrogen is not good for the rivers. Okay. Um, so we, our plant is really good at getting the um, bacteriological things. Uh, so what comes out, you're not going to get sick from. There's no, you know, organics, but there's phosphorus and nitrogen are, are two things because we don't have enough dilution. If we have more land, that the groundwater itself could kind of, kind of do that. But we don't own the land. You know, so there's other solutions. We could buy more land. So there's lots of options to comply, but we don't know what standard they're going to apply to us because, frankly, our and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, our plant is unique. There's only one other like it in New England, at Fort Devon's Mass. Uh, we're, we're a very unique plant. And, uh, the only one that had, the, the other one in Connecticut, and only one or two of that in, in New England had a groundwater discharge. We don't discharge directly into the river because they wouldn't let us 35 years ago. Now they're talking about discharging the Willamette River, and I oppose that because I don't think they've seen that river in August. There is no flow. So, you know, I guess I have some concerns when <coughs> they send a college intern out to tell us what to do. Uh, and then the crosswalk light, uh, which uh, is in process. Um, first of all, uh, so we're finalizing uh, teacher's contract I expected it to come over today. It did not. Um, the Board of Ed uh, uh, approved the teacher's contract on Thursday. Um, just for everyone, once it comes here, the council has a certain number of days, I believe. I have to look it up every time, but I believe it's 30 days uh, to uh, either ratify it, uh, do nothing, do nothing, in which case after 30 days it goes into effect. Uh, or decline it, in which case the, the town might be responsible for the binding uh, arbitration expenses. Um, I haven't seen the contract at all, so I can't, can't give you any judgment on it, but I know that they approved it on Thursday night. Uh, and uh, Carolyn Arapoulos, mm -hmm. uh, you may want to invite her back in because she was the uh, person that sat through the negotiations if you have questions. Uh, we also, on the town side, uh, we're finishing up the police <coughs> and public works uh, contracts. Uh, police, we're just waiting for the union rep uh, to sign it. The union staff person's all set with it. Uh, and uh, the public works uh, contract, uh, we've signed it and given it over. And there's we we're giving it over on Wednesday. Eric's oh. out last week. Okay. Unfortunately. So the town has two <coughs> other uh, ASPE uh, units, the Town Hall and Supervisors Union. and. I had the pleasure of uh, renegotiating the, uh, renegotiating the AFSCME pension for nine unions. Last time that took uh, probably about 100 hours of my time. <coughs> it's like under uh, state law, I have to negotiate for all the board of ed employees uh, for pension. So, uh, first personnel rules, uh, the appendices, uh, we got the personnel rules uh, done the last council there's a number of appendixes that uh, we need some staff time to, to get that but that would uh, go through steering and come back to the council for approval. Uh, just to let you know we started our contract at wetland services uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we hired North Central Conservation Services uh, so we have a person here like 10 hours a week or so uh, in an effort to try to free up some of our town engineers time for some of the other projects and work that's going on. Um, uh, that will have budget implications in this current budget if we choose to stay with that service because we only had uh, nine months out of the year in the prior year budget. So if we decide to keep that, that will be an increase in the budget going forward. But it is going to be a significant help for the town engineer. And that hourly rate's less than hiring outside engineering help. So um, uh, promotion of public works maintainer two. Uh, 
we have deferred that while we're in negotiations. It's in the budget, but we'll run a process to promote one person so that we'll have one more CDL truck driver to drive the big, big trucks. And, and then we'll have to pay the $2. That's what I was just going to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, differential. Yeah. So it's still a net increase slightly, but it's more predictability. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we used to actually have more. As they retire, we can always bring them in as a truck driver and public works maintainer too. So um, that was uh, in this year's budget. Uh, we've got a couple part-time openings. Uh, uh, we need a council clerk because we're sad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, at, um, and uh, part-time uh, uh, recreation assistant uh, who took a full-time job. Senior center. Yeah, it's a senior center. Sorry, is that right? Uh, a couple of new laws that we have to work on. Uh, minimum wage is coming. Uh, that's going to have an impact, especially to our, our rec programs uh, and even registrar voters, uh, staff, uh, and library salaries. And so we're going to see our lifeguards. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Lifeguards. Summer camp will be the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. Summer camp prices will have to go up uh, because the, the wages are going to have to go up. Um, so people aren't going to like that, uh, but th those are things outside our control. Uh, we also, and I mentioned, uh, Mayna's been able to line up uh, uh, some free sexual harassment training, but they, they passed a law that every employee has to be uh, trained in uh, what sexual harassment is and how to how to avoid it, and not do it. We have one year to train all of our current employees, and then if you hire anyone new, they have six months to complete the training. So we're holding some in January. We're going to do it again in June when all our parks and rec kids come back on board. Uh, so um, Kerma Kerm is doing that for us at no cost. Question: on the, Does the family leave impact anybody in town? Just because it's so broad, you know, the way they, they describe it is different than a normal family leave. We are already covered by family leave. Right, so but is, is it is it as? You know that that paid. Any yes. Issue? I don't believe it affects us at all. It doesn't affect us at all? Okay, good. Uh, partly because uh, we give paid leave anyway, so we would always make people take, you actually run out the run out sick leave and so forth. I just maybe thought the uh, description of what constitutes, you know, leave. I'm going to change slightly. We don't have too many employees who okay. to try to abuse that in any way, shape, or form. We've historically not had. I wasn't suggesting they were. Oh, no, no, I'm just saying that people <laughs> normally use it for, for well intentioned reasons. So I don't think that will have any factors. So Amanda's office is also running through a health savings account open enrollments. Uh, open enrollment for the town, everyone in the town. However, the police and public works unions are switching their plans entirely effective January, January 1. So we're doing full open enrollments for them. They have to refill all the paperwork and pick one of the new plans, either the higher level deductible health savings account. Hydraulic plan or our new $30 copay PPO plan. And our consultant that has been running some workshops. Yes, she was out two times last week. She did town hall twice, and then she <coughs> also went to public works and will be over at police and see the second half of public works because they got tied up at Rates Mill Road uh, wow. this week. Priorities. So yeah. um, everyone's been really excited about the sessions. Uh, our new Consultant for USI, we're happy to have her on board. She's been very useful in providing information. So, USI is we went out to rebid for uh, benefit consultants. Uh, <laughs> stay with USI, Sadly. Uh, <laughs> partly because they were the lowest price, but they brought a new person on. They didn't wear, weren't happy, and the new person is working out yeah. rather well and generating excitement of our employees that just didn't really understand the tax benefits of a health savings account. Was well, that so the town contributing 75% of your deductible yeah. is like yeah. a really big deal. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, so we're that's a big deal. explaining it better. And, Plus and it carries gonna, over and you can build. Right. Yes, yeah. and you can put so it So you use as a retirement to pay a Medicare sure, supplement? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they're you They're very, they're getting very excited, so that's been good. Why don't you go on to what Egypt is? And what your role is? ESHIP is um, our Eastern Connecticut Health Insurance Program. <coughs> it's a collaborative of five different entities. Uh, every entity has a representative from the town and board of ed side. I serve as the town's representative for the town of Coventry. I currently also serve as the vice president. There's been a lot of turnover, so after two and a half years, I have that level of seniority on that board. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have had really amazing luck with Egypt. We've been able to keep our health insurance rate either flat. We had two years, three years ago, we had a decrease of 7%. Last year, we had an increase of 3 When you compare that to, to some of the trends, state and nationwide, we were, we've had a really an amazing uh, amazing results of that. Um, Egypt has their own broker, so it's nice. We have USI who's supposed to be comparing that and working through. We get to determine our own rates, and and our plan, our insurance pool um, fund is very well funded at this moment. It has over three million dollars in it, which is a healthy amount to have in there given our, our total claims. So we've had very good luck. We've been we pulled together for um, loss prevention. We pulled together for our employee assistance program. We've gotten that paid through our Signal Wellness dollars. Um, it's, it's been a very successful program. We've been excited about it. Building of facilities, uh, we've got a lot of committees. Uh, we have the Building Energy Efficiency Committee. Um, they have done a lot of projects, all the boilers and burners and oil tanks. Uh, <coughs> um, the What's left uh, is uh, asbestos removal, which is working its way through school in the cafeteria, uh, through the board, State Board of Education. Uh, and the unit, unit ventil ventilators, uh, which uh, is sitting on my desk along with two other RFPs to, to get out to, to hire a, uh, a, uh, an engineering to design build that uh, for review by the public committee. And the fire doors, which just keeps them coming around. Uh, uh, we believe now that everyone's in agreement that if there is a code violation, uh, that Bill Trinell needs to get it back to the board man, to the State Board of Education, so they'll fund their 52% uh, of it. Um, Micrograde cogen and solar virtual net metering. Um, we're in the queue uh, and a waiting list for the virtual net metering for the, the two systems over here. Uh, the system that would go over at the Board of Ed uh, will stay at the, at the Housing Authority, would stay at the Housing Authority when we get transferred. But virtual net metering, the power goes into the grid and comes up at the meter that you want uh, so that you're generating it in one spot and, and consuming and using it somewhere else. Uh, there are some real economic benefits to, to, to that uh, and um, if we get that and the microgrid, uh, we will be very close to being off-grid for all the town and school buildings. So it's just going to be an uh, amazing uh, accomplishment and a lot of players involved. i got to give kudos to the Board of Ed for you know, keeping pursue it. And if for some reason the microgrid problem, uh, project kind of falls to the wayside, we've, we've got solar as a backup. So um, We still have natural gas and generators at least. Yeah, the natural gas is still, still saving a lot of money on that. Um, uh, and uh, it's a cleaner fuel than the model. Uh, so the library building committee uh, is, you know, working along. Uh, the Capital Planning and Zoning Commission, as they were directed to by the uh, uh, council, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission is going to make a determination on what type of parking needs they may need at their first meeting in December. Uh, looks like they may want eight more parking spots because the community room size is slightly bigger that could fit uh, uh, in the, along the back area that people use already as open floor parking. Uh, and uh, I, they were going to be on the Wetlands Commission meeting for this Wednesday. I pushed them back just because I'd rather have Wetlands see it after that. Uh, we've been exploring and got our sewer camera up the drains from the courtyard. Uh, they found some material in there uh, he was able to get past that, uh, and there's a substantial drainage system. They just couldn't tell whether the robot turned left or right. Uh, so we actually have to go and get the structure of some branches and some other things that probably went through the drains, floor, the drains of the courtyard. Uh, uh, we've got to get that motor rooted out, and then we'll be able to see what direction it turns. But uh, we believe that the, the drainage goes back through the parking lot and heads towards the back wall. Uh, because we know the camera was able to go 190 feet. So uh, I 
waiting for some information from the contractor that built the buildings, Lotnick, which Deb Walsh, the chairman of that committee, reached out to, and they said, yeah, I got a file on that, let me look. So, uh, we'll, we'll see. How many years, 32 years ago? Very yeah. yeah. So, uh, and uh, uh, the library did find a bunch of pictures, but none that showed exactly that, that scene. So, uh, You know, at some point that you know they're doing what the last council told them to do, uh, and at some point you'll have to decide, probably through both saying uh, where you, where you are uh, on that. And I don't need to talk more about it tonight unless you want to. But I, I think that's kind of a goal setting kind of issue. Mm -hmm. I can, you know, you may want to bring that back in when you're you're ready. Uh, softball committee is another another one of the RFPs that's sitting on my uh, <coughs> counter uh, my desk corner waiting for me to be able to have time to write it. Uh, while Anchor Engineering was out looking at the, at the uh, to finalize the methane treatment, uh, they're going to prepare the, the kind of concept for softball is there because they already have all the grades and everything else. But we want to go through a, a more competitive process for the other ones. But I've not yet heard from Phil Desiato, so until I don't want to write an RP to include him if, if he's not willing to do it. So uh, I have to. Uh, make some time to uh, make a few phone calls. Uh, so the softball committee meets this Thursday. Uh, they just gave them an update um, that anchors that had something, uh, the, you know, whether we have a spot to relocate our transfer station, that also depends on looking at the pits. And with this, yeah, so it looks kind of like we've got Things in motion, but there's a lot of interplay with, with things. Water study committee uh, has a bet in a number of years. Uh, the board of ed uh, did appoint a new member to that. Uh, I am meeting uh, probably on a quarterly basis with Connecticut Water to keep talking about uh, various issues. Uh, they will be getting uh, the supply up and running um, that will run, get the capacity issues that we've had in the village uh, resolved. Uh, so they're building a, a modest uh, filtration system on the Old Eagle Little Road, uh, and then they can turn that water on, but the supply there is abundant. Uh, so long term, we're working on trying to figure out how to get that water to the other side of the lake, uh, where they, they're trucking in water during the summer. Of course, it would have been nicer if we did it before we could start lake, lake and cross stream, but that never happens, right? But, uh, and maybe relocate the water tower from up here to a lower level that could serve as, as the pressure booster to get it to the other side of the lake. And then that could, could also then feed the, the hydrants. So there's a grant round coming up uh, uh, through the drink, drinking water group. And they're trying to free up some of their, their engineering time to put together an application for that. So we're, we're following through. So I'm not saying we're abandoning the idea of up here. But one of, the, one of the reasons up here was to drive our sprinkler systems. I just didn't want you to confuse people. You said relocate it like it was already there. So <laughs> you just meant relocate the proposed water. Oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, but we had a plan to install a water tower out here by the football field. But the system in the high school would still need the pumps because it's a high pressure sprinkler system. Unless we changed all the heads, uh, uh, you know, we could add sprinklers from this to the middle school. Uh, but the water system that we have up here is still functioning well. It's only about 10 years old or so. Uh, and Orchard Hills was not enthused, I guess is, is, really? is uh, the way to, to, to say it, even though they have lead on water now right. uh, in the front units. Uh, <laughs> there were concerns, right? I don't want you to leave it on the record. Is that there is? Right? There is lead water. Oh, okay. They're out, they're out here order uh, uh, to supply some drinking water for the front units, and that's not uncommon. Just you know, if you test your house and your house was built more than forty years ago, you yeah. probably have lead in the water. And the solution is solder. Run the water. Yeah. Turn the water on for about three or four seconds, and you're fine. Uh, or install all sorts of. Uh, reverse osmosis systems that are very expensive or, or replace all the plumbing. Uh, 
a lot of schools are freaking out at doing doing that, and it's like really overkill. It just is. You know, it's like uh, the water is safe, and most people. Yeah, think about your own habits when you, when you turn on water. Did it run me? You, you typically run it. You like test the temperature. <laughs> you know, by the time you've tested the temperature, it's fine. Uh, so uh, the back units are fine because they were built, a, you know, a little later. But uh, anyway, um, but it is a concern to the people that it's. Affected. Yes, it's a legitimate concern. Yeah. You know, change your change your habits a little bit. Be aware of it. Um, the real lead, lead water, the lead issues are really childhood lead issues. I mean, so that's the other thing. It's the developing mind versus the, the full adult mind. So uh, it, it's a serious issue. These levels are very low. Uh, but we do have a water study committee that uh, may end up having to become more active if we look at kind of this broader interconnection. Um, Senior Housing Options Committee, uh, we've got another name uh, in that will be going to steering. Uh, uh, so they may actually uh, be ready to be charged uh, to start the committee. I think that would be the fourth person. We need five for a quorum. Five for a quorum? Uh, one more. Um, are we going through this whole package tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling I, I, that. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. It could be divided over. Yeah, we, you know, maybe we could, you know. All right. I'll go really quick and see what we get. It's probably in the middle of the anyway. We're almost done with that. So. Sure. Yeah, and. Um, <laughs> you feel like you're already trying to talk to me? Welcome to Covenant. I haven't talked a lot about this, but we were both given a big sign that was like a kind of stone wall. The last council kind of saw pictures of it. We have letters uh, now from the sign manufacturer that came out of last fiscal year. Uh, so when we, Public Works has time, they will install a sign at the intersection of 31 and 44. Uh, Mystery policies and artists. <laughs> uh, uh, they will also, uh, Steering will also have a couple of things that came out. The burn and fire permit ordinances uh, changes uh, requested by the fire marshal uh, were kind of tabled. Uh, they, they need to look at it. There were concerns about how far it goes into kind of ceremonial fires and all those things. So uh, uh, we need, uh, we found a mistake in the record it, so we just have to change a number in it. And we, we shared with the last, uh, it refers to a section that doesn't exist, and, uh, and we just need to change the number. But, uh, and the state passed a law on uh, fracking which overrides ours, so our top current recommends we repeal our fracking, all right, it's not called fracking ordinance, but <laughs> the reality is uh, to, to repeal it as fracking a recommendation. Uh, uh, we describe a lot of ordinances that way, it's not the same. <laughs> so, as the fire merger goes forth, we will need to amend the fire and EMS ordinances in two sections to, to support the committee's recommendations. Uh, over the years, people have talked about charter, whether that's something you want to talk about, but there's some structural issues in our charter, especially on the time and the budget process and a few other things. Uh, there's financial cost to that. It's usually about $10,000 or so. So uh, it would really be for next year's budget if you, if you want to look at it, but there's legal fees and advertising fees. Uh, uh, consortium dates, uh, I think if we set dates soon, you know, for the year, it might be good. And if you have topics that we can bring in some, some people to talk about. Uh, committee reviews. Uh, we have a couple somewhat non-functional committees. Uh, insurance uh, committee hasn't met in years. I actually went to Steering already, and we decided we to yeah, dissolve it. It never went to the full council. I followed up on that. So, so it's, we need an ordinance it's to still there. We need an ordinance to, uh, to abolish the insurance committee, because they don't need it. Uh, uh, Can I bring that to the next hearing meeting? Yeah, we're not there yet. Uh, Veterans uh, Memorial Commission has shrunk down to where they don't have a quorum, nobody's signing up. Informally, there's been some discussion about whether whether we should merge them with the uh, Cemetery Commission, uh, because the Cemetery Commission is getting getting into a lot of those issues, and some of the memor Vietnam memorials are in the cemetery. Uh, uh, so there might be something to pursue. Uh, uh, that, uh, Can you think about to increase the size of that you, committee you from could. 5 to 7 and include the two people on the yeah. Veterans Committee? Yeah, we did that when we merged arts into arts. Thank you. Uh, so 
you would want to talk to probably both committees to see what their thoughts are. Uh, yeah. uh, but um, if you give a charge to the Secretary Commission, it will get done. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> Personnel Appeals Board, we just to formally dis dissolve them with the adoption of the personnel rules. Uh, the Personnel Appeals Board disappeared because it's the, the council's responsibility under the charter. Uh, so we need to tell the people there's maybe only one or two left in it that they no longer exist. Uh, and the Energy Committee is also having real problems uh, getting a form because we can't get people to, to, to be part of that. So Jen Riley, the chairman of the Energy Committee, asked whether whether this should maybe be joined in with the Building Energy yeah. and yeah. Efficiency Committee because <coughs> she intends yeah. that anyway. So that would be something that, again, that Derek could talk about because you know, better to have less better functioning committees. She's still holding Energy Committee meetings with no forum, like for hours on end. <laughs> just I know. Can't involved in all of this, where everyone action. is spending a lot of time on committees with no action. Um, and that uh, we have two kind of uh, councils urging two kind of staff committees uh, since this 2020 complete count. Uh, we're working with the library and, and some other town staff. Uh, we're going to be you know, sending out reminders as the count. Starts coming forward in February. Our town clerk's office is dealing with it, is, is uh, pleased to uh, promote the women's suffrage uh, anniversary. It actually has found an old uh, ballot box that says women only. Uh, oh, wow. From our own history here in town. Wow. Uh, and uh, talking about reaching out to uh, Mrs. Bowen, maybe, who uh, um, might have memories of, of her folk, first vote here. So. Uh, because she just turned 100. Uh, so this goes back before that, but she would remember at least so you know, her first vote kind oh, of sure. you know, when she hit 21. You know, so just uh, some local things. So a couple things, uh, sustainable CT updates. Uh, we'll be uh, updating some of the data as we go through, but they have not announced a different uh, goal yet uh, to break the goal. Uh, and you can tell me when to stop. Uh, stop. <laughs> uh, takes a couple more votes than one. Uh, uh, plenty of other economic development. Uh, we'll be happy if you extend to the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. If you're going to give her two more people to speak up. I, I agree because I think it is important. Yeah. So I don't want to fluff over me. Let me just go with the last one just to remind Christmas in the Village. Uh, we'll plan for a joint finance fiscal meeting for December 12th uh, over at the Board of Ed meeting. Yeah. Uh, Reese Across America Day is 12-14. They're still taking donations for Reese. And uh, we're looking for holiday food, gifts, and bell ringing opportunities. So, uh, the rest, you have it, and we'll pick it up. Yeah, executive session will be two minutes. Thank you. 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 I move that the town council into the executive session for so <coughs> general statutes 1 206D discussion of the selection of a site or the lease sale or purchase of real estate by a political subdivision of the state when publicity regarding such a site lease sale purchase or construction would cause a likelihood of an increased price until such time as all the property has been acquired and or all proceedings or transactions concerning same have been terminated or abandoned with the following people in tennis who's going to stay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so members of the town council, town manager, and Amanda Backhouse, the director of finance. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're Thank in you, the executive Laura. session.